morning. Che, Mr. Malamache, che. Morning, everybody. I'm present. Thank you and sit down. Morning. Che, Mr. Mulder, che. Good morning, Che. Good morning, all. I'm present. Good morning. Che, Mr. Thring, Che. Uh, good morning, Che. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning. Mr. Cuthbert, Che. Thanks very much, Che. I'm present, if I may. Uh, just two issues. One, uh, just to note my apology for tomorrow's meeting due to party business, please. And then secondly, Mr. McPherson will be arriving slightly late because he also has a party commitment today. Okay, thank you. Mr. Butahun, Che. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. I'm present. Good morning. Chair, those are the members on the platform, Chair. Okay. Uh, can we... Ms. Martin, Chair, she's there. We called out the first this morning. Yes. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everyone. I'm present. Good morning. Thank you. Can we have the agenda on the screen, please? Thank you. Um, we have opened the meeting as we are courted and everyone is welcome to this meeting. Um, can I check whether there are any apologies? We note the apology for late arrival for Honorable McPherson. Uh, Chair, we don't have any apologies, but I'm assuming other members may have connectivity problems and we'll follow up with them through the morning check. Okay. That's fine. So can we have a move and a seconder for the adoption of the agenda? Ms. Moatse, Chair. Honorable Moatse. Thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> I move for adoption of the agenda. Thank you. Can we have a seconder for the adoption of the agenda? Mr. Mbuyani. Honorable Mbuyani. Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, I propose that you adopt the agenda as planned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our agenda is duly adopted. So today we will be receiving a presentation from the DTIC. And the purpose of this briefing by the DTIC is to unpack the new model being used for the SEZ program and the extent to which it has been rolled out. Furthermore, they will provide a status update of the existing SEZs in terms of the establishment, the rollout of public infrastructure and top structures, current operational investors, the investment uh, in the uh, investments that's in the pipeline, as well as the number of jobs created. In addition to provide the status update of any uh, possible SEZ that is currently being considered for the designation or are in development. So uh, I think it's Mr. Molefane who will be leading uh, this discussion. Um, thank you very much. Uh, over to the department. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Oh, oh sorry, uh, Deputy Minister. Thank you. Uh, uh, I apologize for not having over to you. You are leading the DTIC team. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, let me greet the members of the Portfolio Committee, Chairperson, greeting you as well. And firstly, let me forward an apology from the Minister. The Minister won't be able to join us today uh, due to the fact that it's Eid today. They are celebrating their uh, they are eating their religious calendar, so the minister has wished you all uh, the good deliberations on today's meeting. And uh, just before I even get into what we are here for today, com uh, honorable members, I think we are meeting under very difficult circumstances. You know, just this morning, 
around the in KZN who have been called three bodies that were already decomposing have been found just under a small bridge. I, I just want to I just want to paint the picture as to say really the situation is quite dire, it's quite bad here, but we hope we'll pull through and Department of Trade, Industry and Competitions and New Comrades, we are in the center of this because even the impact that these droughts have done to our businesses, our companies, our emerging companies, it's quite dire, but let us hope as we work together, even the topic that we've been discussing here, because even some companies in this industrial park have been affected quite badly, but I really believe coming together like this and have these such discussions and where we come and report on the things that you are doing at the department and getting the ideas from the portfolio committee. It's going to make our department even more stronger and say what is it that we can do to change the situation that we are facing in the country. Uh, Chairperson and honor honorable members, uh, as the chairperson have said, in the delegation from the department today, I'm with U U U U D M Umajola. I'm with the acting DG. I want to clarify also to, or maybe let me first apologize for not showing my my my, my picture. There is no water. There is no electricity around. So the issue of connectivity is quite bad. And I think I will manage like this. Pardon me, uh, honorable members, for, for, for not showing my face. I'm trying to save the, the little that I have. Uh, I've got uh, uh, honorable UDM Majola being part of a delegation. Uh, honorable members, let me explain this again. I've uh, 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 DG, the acting DG, we have been having an acting DG, uh, Umalebu. Emma uh, 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 Thompson. As from the 1st of May, we have got a new DG who is acting, who our CFO, who, who, who Mr. Shabir, he's now our, our new acting DG, but for this presentation, we are having who, 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 who acting DG, the previous one, the former one, who, 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 the former acting DG, who, 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 who Malibu Thompson, and with delegation that you are having again, as the chairperson has said, it will be led, the presentation will be led by oh, Mr. Mawo Domolefane, the acting DDG, again. And amongst the team, we have got Tami Klassen, the chief director, and Ms. Susan Mangole, and Mr. Stephen Hanover, Hanover is with us, Mr. Launel October, who is now with our PMU, is also part of the delegation, and. Mr. Stinege is also with us, a part of the EPMU. So we have got a full delegation for the discussions and the questions that might be coming from the portfolio committee to be attended to well and take the discussions that will take our country forward. But we are really want to appreciate this invitation because we strongly believe in the department that when it comes to to the important work that you are doing concerning the spatial industrial development, this component, we strongly believe that this is one mandate that forms the backbone of the departments in the efforts to reindustrialize our country and also that making sure that we build that manufacturing base in our country. Uh, honorable members, for some time now in in the department, we have been doing this critical uh, work around the, the economic zones in line with the SZ Act. We have been busy designating, as Uche has said, a couple of them in various regions to try and industrialize, attracting new investments, and try to create jobs through government, uh, 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 provincial governments. We are here today then to appraise the committee on the status of work that we have done so far. And another work that we have been doing on the topic that we are engaging on today is the revitalization of the industrial parks. We know the history of the industrial parks. We know the aging uh, infrastructure that is there. Uh, that is where we have been trying to, to say, how do you revitalize those uh, aging infrastructure? 
and also making sure that by doing so, how do we attract more investors and the tenants? Uh, and in our revitalization approach, we are trying to modernize uh, those industrial parks by adding new and modern uh, uh, things like the digital hubs for youth and innovations and for the SMMEs. And by so doing, again, we are here to say, we are here to, 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 to report to the committee as to say, what is it that we have been doing? But it's very important, Chair and Honorable Members, to say on both of these two import, uh, important special industrial development programs that I'm talking about, there have been some important lessons that we have learned as we proceed along with the implementation. Some of these lessons and the issues that we'll be talking to relate to the systemic capacity, the constraints that we have seen, the poor government governance issues that we have seen as we are proceeding with these programs, the roles, minimal, let me say so, that we have that we have seen being played by the provincial governments and the municipality. We have also noticed somehow the poor stakeholder engagement, especially in the communities where these uh, industrial parks are located. All these systemic challenges and many more others have been the inhibitors uh, of growth, you know, and the proper functioning of these two important SDIs uh, regimes. Then the, the team that I'm coming up with today was going to expand on these issues so that we can take discussions on there just to say, these are the challenges that have been uh, 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 noticed and what is it that we are doing as the government and as the department to make sure that we mitigate and we make sure that whatever that our communities should be getting, we really reach out to the communities. The team again will take you through at a very high level on the new approach to the special industrial development model, which we believe is in line and also respond to the sixth administration new approach to the district development model oriented uh, in the country. Intergovernmental relations in planning are at the center of the programmatic approach on the, of the new administration. We are saying then, gone are the days now when district uh, municipalities are merely midwives between the local municipality and the provincial and the national municipality, where we just see the province or the national uh, 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 levels giving out the grants and funds, and the, and the local municipality are just acting to as the conveyor belt. But the approach that we are coming up with now is to say, how do we make sure that the role and the economic role of the LEDs in each, each and every municipality it's, it's, it's notice and they play a vital role in making sure that in each and every municipality there is sort of an economic activity that will have the spill out and the, the, the benefits to the, the municipalities that they are located to. So again, that is the approach that you are coming up with. That is the discussion that you are coming up with on our presentation. And we are saying we have learned a, a number of lessons I'll just make an example of the Swane SZ where this development, the district development, uh, development model has been used, where we see all the levels, the national province and the municipality coming together and say, what is it that we can do in this district that will benefit the district? And we have, there are so many lessons, good lessons that we have learned from the model that has been used in Swane as the model to this. So we are going to be learning, learning a lot of lessons and making sure that it spills out to all the municipality around uh, our country, the 52 municipalities that we are having. So the team chairperson and honorable members is going to be taking you through that presentation and making sure that we, 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 we take those discussion. And surely we are always saying from the portfolio committee whenever we come to the portfolio committee, there's so much that will learn that will add to us as the department in making sure that we are able to roll out these programs that 
will make our <clears throat> our country and our communities benefit. So allow me, Chairperson, to hand over then to Mr. Mulefane to lead us on the on the discussion, and then we'll wait for the inputs from the members of the portfolio committee and the question as she as he finishes. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. And may I take this opportunity to welcome Deputy Minister Majola to our meeting on, our, on, on, our, on this platform today. I also want to take this opportunity to wish all our uh, Muslim brothers and sisters and uh, the South African public out there a very blessed Eid Mubarak today. I also uh, thank you very much, uh, um, uh, Deputy Minister Gina, I, for, for briefing this committee. I also want to pass this committee's condolences for, to all those who have lost their lives and those bodies that were discovered yesterday uh, in the, the, the terrible floods that we had in KwaZulu Natal. And we wish that God, God will grant them eternal peace. And we wish that the province will fully recover and come back stronger after this uh, disaster that befell uh, the province and neighboring provinces. Uh, over to you, Mr. Molefani. Thank you, um, Honorable Chairperson. Um, and good morning to honorable members, um, our deputy ministers, um, DG, uh, Team DG and colleagues. Um, apologies, Chair. Um, I'm using two gadgets. Uh, my laptop is acting up uh, this morning, so I borrowed a laptop. Um, don't be surprised if uh, it's written uh, to me show. Um, it says um, it's, it's not my laptop. Um, if we can just fly to um, to the next slide, and I think uh, I must thank uh, DM for setting the context, uh, Chair, that this uh, presentation or this session happens um, at a very difficult time um, when we are confronted with uh, so many challenges um, as a country and as a globe. Um, key amongst them being the recent um, disaster in KZN, um, COVID challenges, uh, which. Um, of course, uh, destabilized the our investment efforts and the global value chain, um, and that affected uh, generally our efforts to um, reindustrialize or to attract um, investments. So we have developed this presentation chair. Um, we have done a thorough introspection and a thorough assessment of the existing tools, um, the special tools, which are in the main. Um, special economic zone and industrial park. So the presentation would not only be self-critical or self-praised, um, but would also deal with the key proposals that we think as a department, um, if we take them forward, we would be able to deal with issues of um, uh, industrial decentralization, uh, reindustrialization, the creation of jobs, and of course, um, dealing with the so many challenges that we are currently um, confronted with. So this presentation would first deal with the status update on the two programs. Uh, we'll also be um, highlighting the challenges that exist in the current um, policy framework. Would we'll be identifying opportunities that we think exist out of the challenges that we have identified. Um, but the latter part of it then deal with the new special industrial development model, uh, which is aimed at achieving our overarching um, outcomes, uh, which are industrialization, transformation, and capable st um, state. Um, can go to the next slide. Um, we can pass this one. I think I've uh, already uh, uh, dealt with it. So I think we are recognizing that our special configuration of the country is characterized by uh, over concentration of economic activities in the few regions. Um, we uh, using Houting as a region, um, KZN, Marisberg, PE, and Cape Town. And all these regions, they contribute over 60% of the GDP. In terms of the land mass, they contribute less than 20%, if I'm not mistaken, Chair. 
So you can imagine the over 60% of the country being contributed by just 20% of the country. That obviously would create challenges in the long term where we're seeing um, exodus of people from um, 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 underdeveloped region going into the main cities. And over a long term, this would affect the service delivery in those regions. Uh, so we are saying that we should be using all these other special uh, instruments to ensure that we develop all the other regions that have maximum potential. And of course, as a result, um, we included um, a special economic zone and in, um, industrial parks as one or as part of those, um, the um, special initiatives that we'll be using to um, redevelop our regions. And of course, uh, these regions would be, or these two instruments will be uh, implemented using the DDM model where we produce one single plan um, for the entire district. At the moment, as you know, we do have special economic zone, which are fenced uh, enclaves and our focus is, has been mainly to provide infrastructure for those enclaves. But we are saying that in expecting our program, our role should be to develop region, uh, not only the SCZ, but taking into consideration what is happening outside of those regions who are able to increase the GVAs and the GDP. Um, we can go to the next slide. So the, as I indicated, this is again introduction to say that we have had um, um, this SEZ um, and industrial park and our uh, department as the DTIC, uh, when we introduced this program, we're in the main uh, adjudicators of application and of course the supporters of the um, 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 infrastructure. So in the main, the SEZs have been um, driven or owned by the provinces. And of course, um, the review of the initiatives has shown that the combined impact of SEZs as an industrial park has resulted in a reported 65,500 jobs. And of course, um, given the scale of challenges, um, we then um, reconfigured this uh, approach insofar as developing the special economic zones and industrial parks. And of course, this, uh, pro approach, uh, this new approach was also um, approved by cabinet in 2019 when they uh, said to us that where well, we've been seeing um, presentation, we've been seeing um, um, status updates on SEZ, but we do think that it's about time that you do a thorough review of the program and identify shortcomings and of course, deal with the mitigation, challenge, um, uh, mitigation factors that would have uh, led to those challenges and advise us on in terms of how do we then address uh, such challenges. Um, we can go to the next slide. So the first part of the presentation would deal with special economic zone share, just to give you a background context performance. Um, as DM has indicated, uh, we also use in TASAS as a case study would also be giving the um, committee the high level update on the high capacity rail corridor link to Tswari. Uh, would also be dealing with the lessons learned from the implementation of the SCZ. Uh, would also be just giving you a high level synopsis in terms of the work that the PMU uh, that we've established has done. And uh, lastly, would be dealing with the um, financial dis uh, distribution um, that the DTI has made in so far as the support to the implementation of the Special Economic Zone program. Um, this is again um, just to rehearse in terms of what the Special Economic Zone is all about um, and what it intends to do. Um, of course, the first one is to facilitate the creation of an industrial complex having strategic um, national economic advantage for targeted investment. As we know that the SCZ is mainly a geographic area um, that is earmarked um, to support specific uh, industrial activities with the special measures uh, that are not necessarily available uh, to the rest of the country. And of course, we're using the special economic zone to develop state-of-the-art infrastructure for those targeted economic activities. We're using the SCZ to attract foreign and direct, uh, I mean, and domestic direct investments, uh, and of course, providing the location for the establishment of targeted investments. We're also using the SCZ to accelerate 
the beneficiation of our mineral and resource uh, endowments. And of course, we also using this to take advantage of the existing industrial and technological capacity to promote integration with local industry, uh, thereby increasing um, the value added uh, production. Uh, we also using the SEZ to develop our regions as I indicated that we only have few regions in the country that are developed, but we are also saying that we are going to, or we are using the SEZ um, not only to expand uh, existing cities, but we also using this SEZ to catalyze the creation of uh, new cities. And of course, ultimately, we want to see uh, these programs creating decent jobs uh, for people, uh, also supporting um, our small, uh, micro, mid and medium enterprises. Uh, while we are attracting a foreign direct investments, our intention is to ultimately ensure that we create our own uh, industrial capability, uh, create, uh, supporting the, our small enterprises so that they can systematically grow and uh, participate in the mainstream uh, and the global economy. Um, and of course, uh, ultimately, we're using this to generate new innovative and economic activities. Uh, you can go to the next slide. This um, just give uh, chair um, the committee the context within which uh, we come from um, in terms of implementing special economic zone program. Um, we came through uh, different epochs. The first epoch was um, in 2000 to 2010 uh, when we had a program called Industrial Development Zone. The IDZ was established mainly to uh, attract um, foreign direct investments. Um, to uh, increase our exportation um, products, our pro our products. So in the main, our SCIDZ program, uh, you could only uh, establish them if you're in proximity to the port of entry, whether it's an international airport or seaport. Um, as a result, uh, we designated uh, four industrial development zones, which were Guha, East London, Richards Bay, and Oartambo. The Oartam was the only inland uh, IDZ, mainly because of uh, its proximity to the international uh, airport. By 2010, um, as a result of this program, we had only attracted 40 investors with a combined investment value of uh, 11.8 billion, creating um, just over 41,000 um, uh, jo uh, construction uh, jobs, which were in the main in the construction. Uh, and of course, uh, this led to the review of the uh, program, where we said in line with the in, uh, what's happening internationally, uh, we may have to assess the program and see if we can align ourselves because globalization is uh, it's such that the countries are now competing um, aggressively and their position in their cities. So competition is no longer about countries, but the, about uh, between cities. So let us uh, review this program. We visited many countries that have succeeded in developing SEZ, such as China, Malaysia, uh, Russia, and other uh, countries such as India. In Africa, we visited countries such as uh, Zambia, Kenya, and so forth, mainly to learn what uh, should we do in order to create a competitive program, but also uh, learning from those uh, SCZs uh, or countries that failed in terms of developing the SCZ programs. And this program led to the new policy and legislation, which ultimately the president uh, pro uh, promulgated it in 2014. Um, while we were dealing with the promulgation processes, learning from those mistakes, learning from these countries that have succeeded, we simultaneously identified 10 potential special economic zones that were subjected through a feasibility uh, study process. And of course, when we're reviewing this policy, we identified uh, key strategic elements. The first one was um, in order for us to have a maximum impact, let us uh, focus on the countrywide as opposed to just port of interest. Let's take advantage of comparative and competitive advantages of each region enhance governance and coordinating planning. Uh, during the IDZ program, we did not have proper governance arrangements. We're just managing it internally, dealing directly with the SEZ. But under the program, we introduced what you call SEZ advisory board, 
which then helped the department and the state in terms of managing properly the SCZ program. But we also developed if, um, a dedicated financial instruments that support the program. Previously, we did not have the uh, existing financial mechanism. We're just funding the SCZ at ad hoc, depending on the availability of funding in the DTIC systems. But with the introduction of the SCZ Act, we introduced a dedicated finance, uh, SCZ fund with sole responsibilities just to support the SCZ. Uh, but imme immediately, uh, working in concurrence with the Minister of Finance, we introduced a number of uh, suit, um, or incentives that uh, are used to support the SCZ uh, program. Um, and of course, um, moving from uh, 2011, the act, um, which was also in, um, um, implemented from 2014, um, in 2020 or 2019, uh, late 2019, we started to do another review uh, of the SCZ program. By then, we had designated um, new, uh, new special economic zones, but we realized that majority of the special economic zones that had solid uh, business plan, that had solid um, feasibility studies, they were still not um, achieving the intended uh, objectives of the legislation. So we had to do another assessment to check what has happened, what is it that we're not getting right uh, out of this um, uh, new special economic zones that um, we uh, uh, designated. And that review also um, emanate from the the, the submission to the cabinet that we took, uh, where we were requesting that um, we designate um, the proposed uh, Bujanara SCZ in the Northwest. And cabinet felt that instead of uh, um, designating a new special economic zone, let's first do a thorough assessment and identify the key challenges that make the SCZ work. Because one of the challenges that we were raising was that the SCZs are driven largely by provinces and the DTIC has little control over what um, uh, um, happens at the SCZ level. And felt, cabinet um, felt that the DTI must uh, do a thorough assessment, but also um, explore a possibility of uh, strengthening the role of national government in so far as driving and supporting the special economic zone. As a result of that cabinet directive, we're able to uh, come up with a new approach uh, we also established the national uh, PMU, which is now led by the uh, our former DG, uh, Mr. Lennon October. And of course, that's uh, the role of that uh, of the PMU is in the main just to help us accelerate the implementation of this uh, new approach. And uh, in addition to that, uh, as the DMS indicated, the first SCZ that uh, was the approved or designated um, within the context of this new approach was trying to automotive SCZ. And we requested government um, cabinet that be, uh, give us an opportunity to test new, this new model uh, with Swanee automotive uh, SCZ. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, I'll deal uh, in details with uh, what we did and what happened and what we have achieved with the Swanee automotive SCZ. As I didn't can that share, this uh, just provides summary in terms of the support that we currently provide into special economic zone. We have uh, financial tax incentives that uh, were approved by the Minister of Finance. The first one is 15% corporate tax um, for companies that are outside of special economic zone, they pay 28%, but those that are within special economic zone only pay 15%. Uh, subject to the qualification criteria. Um, they also um, um, qualifying factories, um, they can qualify for be in a custom control area where they get duty-free and vet-free uh, exemptions. There's also employment tax incentive. It uh, applies, of course, even outside, but if you're outside a special economic zone, uh, you also qualify. Um, accelerated depreciation allowance on buildings for uh, investors that own buildings inside the special economic zone. Over and above the tax incentives, as indicated, we established a dedicated support instruments at national level. The first one being the infrastructure fund, where we are saying that our investment or investors, they must be worried about machineries and salaries of employees, but infrastructure, top structures, water and everything would be developed by government uh, through that SCZ fund. And of course, at the SCZ level, they also get 
preferential rental um, on properties that they rent. Uh, we also support them through integrated and simplified investment procedures. So we are saying that any investor that comes into the SCZ, they must not be worried about the red tape. Our SCZ are established mainly to deal with the red tapes. And through Investment South Africa, we have established a number of um, um, uh, one-stop shops across the, the country. Um, at the moment, Chair, the Minister of Finance has approved uh, six special economic zones that qualify for tax incentives. Um, we continue to engage with our National Treasury to include other strategic um, SCZs. Those that qualify for tax incentives at the moment are Guha, East London, Dewey Trade Port, Richards Bay, Saldana Bay SCZ, and Maludi Apofol in the Free State. You can go to the next slide. So as I indicated, uh, Chair, uh, prior to um, cabinet uh, in, in approval, the TI was only uh, issuing invites to provinces uh, where they identify possible areas for SCZ, and those proposals will then be subjected to MINMEC, um, and MINMEC will go through, of course, supported by us as technical uh, officials, um, the MINMEC would approve those uh, SCZs. Um, so this process, again, was a very thorough process. I remember when we invited provinces, we had about 50 special economic zones. Some provinces identified 10 special economic zones at, at the go. So we had to take them through a thorough assessment criteria, which ultimately led to only 10 uh, proposed special economic zones being approved, and they were subjected to feasibility studies. Some of these 10 special economic zones are still going through um, feasibility testing or planning testing to uh, just to demonstrate how thorough that process it is. And of course, there are challenges that we continue to experience in dealing with such challenges. And of course, we also provided seed funding for the establishment of uh, project management units in provinces. Uh, we also, as the DTIC, funded all the feasibility studies. Um, and of course, we provided technical support, guidance to provinces um, in terms of establishing the PMU, what area they need to focus on, including the stakeholder coordination. Once the feasibility study uh, are completed and the SEZ were viable, um, the applications were then subjected to another assessment by SEZ advisory board, which would recommend to the minister and cabinet. And of course, the minister would approve um, and of course, um, refer to cabinet for ratification, the SEZ will be designated. Provinces, uh, as indicated, all SEZs were managed, owned, and driven by provinces. Uh, provinces would establish entities to develop and manage the SEZ. The DTIC had no role in so far as management and ownership, except uh, having one board representative on the board. Uh, and of course, we know that in terms of companies act, they are not necessarily um, DTI reps, but they are uh, having their own fiduciary duty. So we could only nominate a board representative uh, on the, um, to sit on the board of SCZ. And of course, in terms of infrastructure, DTI funded or supported all the SCZs with the infrastructure funding, including all the tax incentives that are approved by the Minister of Finance. So the SCZ program continues to be a concurrent function between the DTIC and the National Treasury, where uh, the designation has to be approved by both the ministers, including SCZs that qualify for the tax incentives, uh, the Minister of Finance is the one that has uh, prerogatives in terms of which SCZ qualify for the tax incentives. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So in, ten, um, um, uh, in, 19, in, in August 2019, as indicated, Cabinet directed the TIC to undertake a review of the program with a view to strengthen the role uh, of national government, but also ensuring that all the other critical partners have uh, specific roles to play. In that review, we have identified a number of challenges, key amongst them being um, failure to commit sufficient resources to infrastructure and human resources um, at the provincial level, convoluted value propositions of the SCZ, um, where SCZ were failing to produce unique value propositions. And as a result, they were just competing against each other, focusing on everything. 
weak investment commitments, which led to pro, uh, premature designation. Before 2019 or 2020, where we used to allow SCZ to submit letters of commitments from investments, uh, but we realized uh, later that those letters of commitments, because they were not detailed, they did not have um, baking in terms of timelines and uh, 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 signed agreements, uh, some of these investments fell off, but others were, did not f uh, f uh, fall. They just were not ready to invest um, uh, at the time when we designated. So the time period between the designation and when we got the first investment on the ground was quite long. And of course, weak stakeholder management across and within spheres of government, especially at the provincial and local municipalities, where we realized that some of the investments were just blocked by bureaucratic processes happening at the local level, where, for example, um, it takes five years for a, a mere building plan to be approved. It takes many years for EIA to be approved. It takes years for a, a land agreement to be signed. And these are the areas which are within the custodianship of local municipalities and province, but because they don't have a proper coordination and stakeholder relations, some of this affected our ability to accelerate the implementation. And of course, uh, the other challenge was in app executive management team, high turnover of critical experience employees and CEOs. Different to the SCSs that are succeeding, those that uh, were st struggling, we realized that they don't have qualified um, uh, management teams, this high turnover, many of them spend years without CEOs or executives and have had weak governance systems. And of course, some of them were just focusing on um, short-term planning. They did not have uh, um, long-term planning um, 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 uh, uh, plans. In response to these challenges, the DTIC then developed this new approach, uh, which was ultimately approved by cabinet. And key areas that we looked at as uh, things that would help us to unlock some of these challenges was the strong involvement of the DTIC in the implementation, not only uh, in terms of uh, providing technical support, but taking ownership um, in the SCZ, but and also taking direct involvement in terms of who it gets appointed at the board level, who gets appointed in terms of executives uh, to ensure that there's proper oversight. Building a strong, unique, uh, and um, unique value proposition for special economic zone to ensure that we're able to sell um, SCZ that are credible, long-term planning that caters for um, for holistic support of each SCZ. As I indicated previously, we just focus on enclaves, but with the new approach, we are saying our support should be district wide. When we say we're designating the SCZ in Tswane, that is why we call it Tswane. Our view is that we need to support and have a single plan for the entire district, even in kind of investments that would not necessarily be inside, but support the entire industrial ecosystem would still be supported even if they're outside the fence. But of course, we understand that we will not be able to uh, implement the long-term uh, uh, plan at the go. If we have 50-year master plan, let us have a medium-term project long-term projects and the short-term projects. So we're able to know from outset where we are going and what the route are we taking to achieve that particular long-term planning. Collaborative uh, planning that involves fiscal contribution from all spheres of government and the private sector. As I indicated previously, the role that government was playing was just the DTIC funding everything, including um, the uh, salaries. Uh, so when we established, uh, when we introduced the new legislation, uh, one way of involving provinces because they were ex uh, they were just pass uh, passive participants. We said provinces, you're going to take care of operational costs. Um, our view was that if the province, um, um, if the SCs that are costing the province, then it means they would uh, provide a proper support and oversight to special economic zone. So in going forward in 2019, we realized that. Uh, we're still experiencing a challenge where, for example, municipalities are selling land to SCZ when in the main the SCZ is for the municipalities. Uh, provinces not really contributing towards the infrastructure, private sector not participating. So with the new approach, we said all spheres of government, um, all the departments at the national level, let us embrace this program. This should not only be seen as the DTIC project, should not be seen 
as the economic development uh, department at the provincial level, SCZ is a government program. That is why we are not calling it special industrial development zone, but we're calling it a special economic zone because special economic zone go beyond just the manufacturing. It's economic activity. Anything that is economic has to be supported to make sure that we are able to uh, make the area sustainable. So that is why we're saying that with the new approach, all spheres of government must be involved and we must have a single plan. If we're intervening in a particular district, all the departments, all the spheres of government, including the uh, social partners at that particular district must come together and produce one single plan for that zone. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So this uh, chair just gives you, uh, just gives you um, um, a synopsis in terms of the overall performance that to date we have, uh, we always say uh, we have 10 stroke 11 um, SCZ because uh, TASES um, um, remains an extension of OR Tambo. The number of operational investments, we are sitting at 169 uh, to date. Uh, rent value of operational investments, we're sitting at just over 22 billion. This is just the private investment. Number of uh, direct jobs um, created in special economic zone, we're sitting at over 19,000. And operational uh, jobs, we're referring to factory floor jobs. We're not counting uh, support jobs such as uh, operators themselves, securities at the gate, um, the multipliers. These are just factory jobs that you would find um, on the database of uh, SARS. Um, and of course, um, in terms of um, the disbursements to date, we have so far distributed uh, 10 billion rand. I must indicate that part of the reason why you would see the 10 billion is mainly because when you start with the establishment of special economic zone, bulk of the funding goes to the bulk infrastructure which over time um, uh, becomes less and less and lesser. So obviously anyone that builds a house would know that when you build a foundation, you spend a lot of money, but when you start with the structures and so forth, then the, the, the cost becomes um, the, um, minimal. So bulk of the money um, had gone to the bulk infrastructure of the SCZ. Um, so some of these SCZ such as Goha, East London, we are now just funding the um, um, top structures, which are um, less in terms of cost. You can go to the next slide. In terms of um, the um, um, breakdown of investments, we're still having Goha as the biggest SCZ, not only in the country, but on the African continent. Uh, we still have other SCZ such as East London that are also contributing significantly to the um, in number of the investments. And of course, uh, we have others such as Dubai Trade Board, um, such uh, others uh, such as Toronto Automotive SCZ that are coming to the stream. Um, the SCZ was built in 24 months, uh, or reached the three SCZ operational. Um, we are creating uh, over 600 jobs. And of course, uh, we have others that are also building factories, um, such as Richards Bay, where they've attracted, um, they, I think they're currently building factories uh, for investment value of uh, five, over 5 billion. Uh, Saldana BSCZ is also beginning to shake up. Um, uh, of course, Atlantis is also um, building some factories as well as Uartambo. So we do think that the new approach um, would give us significant boost in so far as the attraction of uh, investments. We can go to the next slide. So this is the breakdown in terms of contribution by uh, sector. We have automotive sector contributing 30% of the um, um, companies that are located in special economic zone, in the main being um, Guha, East London, and Tazas. Um, for example, we have about 21 um, suppliers in the um, East London uh, IDZ linked to um, Mercedes-Benz. Uh, we built a number of suppliers at um, Tazas, um, supporting Ford. Um, at Kuha, there are suppliers linked to um, uh, um, uh, VW, there are suppliers linked to um, um, Bake, um, and probably suppliers linked to um, Isuzu. And of course, other sectors that are contributing 
and of course, especially those SCSs that are in proximity to the ports um, is uh, logistics. Um, we have uh, general manufacturing as well, uh, contributing over 15%. Uh, chemicals, metals, uh, BPO sector also uh, playing a significant role in terms of job creation, uh, agro-processing and pharmaceutical. These are some of the uh, companies that are located in SCZ. And of course, we have another increasing um, um, uh, sector, which is energy, especially in the renewable sector. Uh, in SCZ such as Atlantis and uh, Guha, these are the special economic zone where we expect a um, significant increase in terms of uh, contribution to the SCZ investments. Um, you can go to the next slide. In terms of uh, job creation, again, uh, you see various sectors here contributing uh, various percentages, um, automotive, uh, logistics, um, and other sectors such as agro-processing, agro leading in terms of um, the, um, the contribution by a sector. You can go to the next one. Again, um, there are um, secured investments that are not yet operational. Um, the secured investments that are not yet operational, these are uh, investments that are at different stages of uh, development. So some of them, um, they are finalizing the construction, such as TASES. Uh, so some of them are at the financial close. Some of them have signed the agreement. Some of them are waiting for building plans to be approved. So they are at different stages of development. Some of them will be operationalized in the next few months. That some of them would, of course, be operationalized in the end of the financial year. So you can see, in terms of number, um, at TASES, we have nine that we expect to be operational as of the 1st of September this year. We have Goha uh, leading, uh, I mean, with eight. We have East London with 11, uh, Saldana Bay with 21. Um, so we expect the serious contribution, of course, supported by the DTIC uh, through this uh, revamped or new approach to the implementation of special economic zone. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So this, uh, again, just speaks to the assessment. As I indicated, there are SCZs that continue to flourish, um, and there are SCZs that uh, are beginning to, um, uh, to wake up in terms of uh, securing their viability. And there are those that, uh, frankly speaking, they are struggling, and then they require a serious support and, and, and consideration in terms of what needs to be done. And of course, there are new proposed SCZs that are going through um, uh, feasibility studies. Some of them are going through evaluation process at the moment, and some of them are already being implemented as uh, through a phased approach uh, as industrial parks with the view that once they pick up, um, they will be um, designated as special economic zone. Those that are currently uh, doing quite well are Guha, uh, China Automotive SCZ, Dubai Trade Port, East London, and of course, there are different um, uh, factors that led to the success of this special economic zone. I'll deal with those ones later. And there are those that have been struggling. These are Richards Bay, Saldana, Atlantis. Previously, when they were struggling, uh, we then decided to do a thorough uh, assessment of those parks, and we worked with them to do uh, turnaround plans. Some of this, um, um, they've completed those turnaround plans and they're currently implementing, and that's why we're seeing a different um, a paradigm in terms of development, such as Richards Bay, Saldana, Atlantis. So we worked with them to develop a new approach, including Uartambo. So we're currently helping them to implement those uh, plans. Um, struggling SCZs, uh, it's Maluti Apofung, Musina Makato SCZ, Ngomazi SCZ. Again, the challenges here are different. Um, I'll deal with those uh, challenges uh, later. And then, of course, uh, the current new proposals that we're currently dealing with is Bujanala SCZ. As I indicated, this uh, was um, the SCZ that um, we presented to cabinet. Um, and cabinet felt that we need to do more work um, and link it to the new approach. There's work that we're doing with province at the moment, including the uh, support from the private sector um, through the mines such as um, Sivanyu mine, which uh, donated land and so forth. Uh, we're working with Val SCZ. Um, I'm going to give an example about Val SCZ in terms of the work that we're currently doing. 
Uh, we're working with the Northern Cape on the Namakwa SCZ. The SCZ is anchored by um, 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 Eventata with over 20 billion worth of investment. We're working with Fetahomu, proposed SCZ again, partnering with the Tlenko and the all spheres of government. This is probably going to be the next one where we implement the new approach um, um, in, um, in its entirety. Uh, we also um, exploring a possibility of uh, establishing a pharmaceutical cluster in the Eastern Cape. Um, you can go to the next slide. So in terms of the SCZs that are struggling, um, of course, um, in terms of Mosina Makato, um, there's still no investment on site, mainly because the, for the longest time, the SCZ was experiencing a serious opposition um, through EIA appeals and through AIA oppositions. Um, as of um, um, March this year, they were able to get EIA approval. The SEZ has got two land parcels. Um, the one is based in the Makato uh, area or municipal area. The second one is based in the Musina area. They are both uh, in the Vemba district of Limpopo. The province um, has started with the um, road infrastructure, um, it, uh, including the bulk infrastructure for the SCZ. The province, through this new approach, uh, we are able to convince them to fund the bulk infrastructure. They have contributed uh, um, 600 million for that bulk infrastructure. So um, from the, um, the report we got from the province, they will be breaking ground on the 26th of May, 2022. Um, so in terms of the challenges, I think in the main here, um, the SCZ was experiencing challenges that were beyond the provincial control or national control uh, it related to EIA, related to water. So we uh, will be supporting the SCZ through the DTIC and the PMU to ensure that uh, some of those challenges are addressed and hoping that the implementation will be uh, bearing uh, fruits. And Gomazi SCZ, um, um, there are no investments on site. Uh, I must say this is where we've been struggling as the DTIC in terms of uh, support. Uh, I know um, 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 Honorable um, uh, Deputy Minister Majora will speak to that as well. In terms of the efforts that the DTI has put in driving this SCZ. So the SCZ um, was designated somewhere in 2018, 20, uh, 2018 or 2019. Um, we've been struggling again with the issues such as town planning um, and issues related to township establishment, EIAs, um, the coordination, um, the SCZ was given to the province and there was just no um, uh, progress at all. And with the DTIC involvement, we've been able to help them to establish a company, join the board. Um, but the problem that we continue to experience is a passive involvement of the provincial government. Um, but we have been able to, through the support of the PMU, uh, secure um, at least one investor which would be able to anchor. There are a number of investments, but I want to talk only about investments that were quite certain that they are not theoretical concept, but investments that are secured. So at the moment, there is one investment that we think um, would be able to anchor the project. Uh, it's uh, one of the global um, logistics company called Dubai Port. They're investing 330 million. And the beauty about them is that they're investing their own money. And we do think that uh, based on the that investment, it would uh, catalyze and stimulate more um, uh, warehouses and more manufacturing companies. The SCZ, as we know, is strategically located not only to facilitate SCFT issues, but also regional development. It's in proximity to Swaziland, it's in proximity to Mozambique, it's closer to the port of Maputo. So the, if this SCZ gets uh, enough support, we do anticipate that it will not only um, change the economic landscape of the Inlanzene district, but that of the province and the country in terms of um, the logistic uh, networks and the manufacturing, uh, the diversified manufacturing sectors. I can go to the next slide. Uh, as I indicated, when we implemented the new approach, 
um, we immediately started, I think this was the first SCZ. We haven't designated any SCZ because we wanted to experiment this model. So in 2020, Tazers became the testing ground for the new model. And unfortunately, this was at a time when we experienced a hard lockdown. Um, but with the um, um, DTI team that was dedicated, we were able to immediately um, convene ourselves and uh, start implementing this project. The Houghton Provincial Government requested the TTIC to lead the project because there were some delays, uh, even though we were involved, but in terms of implementation, initially it was with the province. Um, but because of, we were deeply, uh, directly involved uh, in the implementation, the province ultimately uh, requested us as the DTIC to lead the implementation. And I think it, um, um, we're able to achieve a number of things. Key amongst them was that we're able to immediately solidify the 4.3 billion from 12 investor, uh, investors that were mobilized. Um, the DTIC was able to register a company, uh, appoint a board, um, and, and of course, they start uh, with the planning for the construction of six um, 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 of twelve uh, factories. And as I indicated, Chair, this was at a difficult time when we could not drive to anywhere. Uh, we were working until midnight um, as the team during uh, level five. And of course, we were able to craft a SZ strategy, which then positioned city of Tuani as a leading automotive uh, city. Uh, we were able to work through the support. And I think I must uh, say that one of the things that helped us achieve a lot within short space of time was through a coordination by our political principles. Um, we have a, 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 we established a, technic, a, a technical committee that we drove as a technical team, but also we established a political steering committee, which was able to help us unlock um, where we uh, experience in challenges. The technical, uh, the political committee was led by our Honorable Deputy Minister Majola, was led by Premier Makura, was led by the MEC and the Mayor of Tswani. So through that committee, we were able to, in one meeting, just uh, discuss the plan and discuss timelines and say, if we were to do this uh, EIA, we know that it takes 12 months but how best can we accelerate this? What are the challenges that would stop us from achieving EIA process in one year? And um, of course, within the context of the legislation. So Chair, through that committee with a dedicated team, we're able to achieve things like EIA in three months. Township establishment, um, we're able to achieve uh, those things in three months because at the political level, there was a political will at the technical level, we identified key officials that could drive the implementation. And of course, uh, things like water use license that would not really take longer were achieved in, in, uh, in less than six months. The bulk infrastructure, 12 factories, it normally takes five years or three years before the first investor land on the ground after designation. SCZ such as Kuha, it took, it took us almost 10 years before the first investor landed at Dubai Trade Port. Uh, but with Chwani Automotive SCZ, immediately when we, um, we, we designated, we took the president there around um, uh, um, November, um, in 20, uh, November 2019, if I'm not mistaken, 2020, immediately after designation, it was a, a, a greenfield. Uh, 24 months later, 12 factories are on the ground the bulk infrastructure connection, electricity, water, um, roads are all connected. And of course, overachievement was also the support uh, to SMMEs. We know that legislatively, there's 30% set aside, but in Tazers, we're able to use 45% of the infrastructure spend on supporting the SMMEs. We also worked with the community um, um, to ensure that the community embraced the project. Community is uh, part of the project. In terms of jobs, I think um, we um, um, uh, overachieved in terms of meeting the object, uh, our objectives of supporting the local communities because we are always saying that when you establish SCZ, 
they are about and they are for local communities. I think in, in Tazas, during construction phase, we're able to achieve that. And we do hope that and believe that even as we enter the operational phase, if uh, the factory jobs would also not only benefit the country, but benefit the local communities of uh, Silverton and Swan. You can go to the next slide. Um, this one's chair is just to illustrate the point that I was raising that in August 2020, we have a greenfield where there was absolutely nothing on the ground, even the fence. Um, moving to November 2020, there were um, earthworks. Uh, this year, uh, the picture on the top right is um, a three months uh, pictures of the earthworks taking place there. And going the following year in May 2021, you can see top structure construction already taking place. Um, and of course, October 2021, the same year, we had the first factory operational, which is uh, Aero Glass. So you can see the work that was accelerated in just less than 24 months. And of course, March 2022, we have completed all the factories. And of course, the internal roads, we can see uh, roads there, a roads network, there's water. Um, the only thing that uh, I must indicate that we're struggling with uh, chair is the electricity. But because the TIC is directly involved, um, we have even established a committee that consists of uh, Houting, uh, Twani, uh, Tazas, and ESCOM that tries to um, deal with the issue of electricity. At the moment, uh, those that stay in Pretoria East, they would know that uh, every week there is uh, load shedding. The entire Pretoria East, um, they've got a serious uh, energy issue. So we're working with Tazas as national government to help them establish a new electricity in feet, uh, which will support the entire Pretoria. But because we recognize the impact of the uh, establishment of that in feet, we do think that as national government, we should be involved. And that is why we're talking about a new approach, because we know that that in feed has nothing to do with the industrialization, but we know that it will catalyze and stimulate economic uh, development. So we've, uh, we're working on that. Uh, we have also worked uh, working with the ESCOM to ensure that we support the new, uh, the 12 factories that have been established with the energy that we can find somewhere. Um, and of course, many of these factories now, they've started with the um, commissioning, they're putting the, um, the, um, the equipments and the testing inside. Um, I do also recommend that the at some point the committee chair, if they've got if the time allows, they can go and see what we're really talking about on the ground. This uh, um, um, uh, uh, slide just uh, also um, trying to illustrate uh, when and uh, by when will the uh, these factories be operational and the practical completion and so forth. As I indicated, majority of these factories are completed um, in terms of the uh, operationalization because they are linked to this uh, new Ford model, which will uh, uh, start producing new cars by uh, um, uh, somewhere this year. So many of these um, factories will open at the same time as the fac uh, Ford factory when they start producing the new uh, Ford vehicles. But uh, those that are operational, they're operational because they are also um, continuing to support the existing models that the Ford is producing. So the reason why they are uh, already producing is because they are supplying the current model. Um, if the uh, others, they were also supplying, they would have started producing as well. You can go to the next slide. As I indicated, Chair, uh, that um, we've uh, worked on the Tazas project and we have achieved a lot. Um, this is another uh, exciting story that came as a result of the high capacity rail corridor. Uh, when we uh, worked with Ford in terms of the expansion, um, we also assessed the logistical arrangements in terms of where and how they would be transporting the cars. And this then uh, created an opportunity for us to look at the existing capacity of the country and see where we can expand. So we've been working with uh, uh, Ford, the government of Gauteng and the Eastern Cape to explore a possibility of creating another link from Ford to Eastern Cape. 
This process is going through a feasibility study process, but we do anticipate that there will be more opportunities in terms of uh, job creation. There will be more opportunities in terms of um, um, SMMEs that will benefit from this uh, initiative. The rail upgrade will be from Tswane in Silverton. Um, we're exploring a possibility of establishing it in Port Elizabeth, um, which has led to, um, would lead to expansion of the um, uh, PE port. Um, we're also working with TNPA. They are also um, expanding the East London port. So this again catalyzed on other opportunities uh, in the country that otherwise, if it wasn't for this uh, initiative, uh, would not have uh, uh, been unlocked. We're also working with IDC to explore a possibility of funding uh, some of the initiatives, including the bankable feasibility study. We have concluded the pre-feasibility study. I think uh, overall, Chair, the, we anticipate that uh, by 2025, uh, this work uh, would have uh, been completed or at least at advanced stage. Um, all hands are on deck. All spheres of government are committed, um, including the fort itself. So again, these are exciting uh, news that were unlocked by the new approach that goes beyond just the fenced area, but looking at the entire economic uh, uh, um, uh, opportunities of the country. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Again, um, this just gives you um, year on year growth in terms of uh, investment uh, performance uh, in the context of a new approach. Uh, you can see from 2019, there's been a year-on-year -year growth in terms of um, investment from 2019 or 2018, 2019 financial year until the current financial year. You can see a significant increase in terms of uh, investments from 14 to 22 um, uh, billion. And of course, uh, um, the growth uh, is uh, it's, uh, it's over 7 billion. You can see yearly, there was at least a couple of billion increase in terms of the investments uh, in the in, in of um, the companies uh, located in special economic zones. You can go to the next slide. A again, this is a cumulative uh, um, headcount uh, in the number of jobs created in special economic zone. I must say, say, Chair, this was not exciting journey at all. Um, we experienced le lots of uh, turbulences uh, along the way. When COVID was established, many of our companies, many of our um, great investments um, had to close down. Some of them had to retrench. So what is happening outside of uh, SCZ was also happening in special economic zones. Uh, so we're experiencing a number of um, 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 retrenchments, um, few companies closing down. But in terms of uh, job creation, you can see in terms of the numbers just under 4,000 from um, um, 2019. Uh, can go to the next slide. Um, Chair, I did indicate that I'll deal with the challenges and the performance assessment um, of the SCZ program. So on the left, you have key successes determ uh, uh, um, determining what uh, makes uh, this SCZ work. And of course, on the right is factors leading to the underperformance or laxer uh, performance by um, uh, struggling SCZ. I think um, I was just trying to be modest by saying less successful because many of them are, uh, some of them are really struggling as indicated. And of course, we established that those that are struggling, um, challenges related to value proposition, we have convoluted value proposition um, developed on the basis of uh, investments on the basis of land, but there's really no um, solid, uh, well-defined value proposition. As I indicated, part of that would be work uh, stakeholder management. We have SEZs such as Maluti Apofung and, and uh, Ngomazi, where really we are struggling to make strides with provinces. Uh, you have, uh, you may have a team that is uh, dedicated in the SCZ, but if there is less support from the province, you're not going to um, 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 achieve anything. If you have dedicated province, but you don't have a dedicated mus uh, municipality, you're going to struggle because some of the real service delivery issues are taken care of by the municipalities. Issues related to water, issues related to electricity, issues related to internal roads, 
um, and so forth. Those are the municipally driven initiatives. And if the municipality is uh, uh, disorganized, it's unlikely that you will achieve a lot. Yeah, you, um, I'm sure honorable members would know of what's happening in the um, in the Maluti Apofung with electricity municipality, having been in the um, admin under administration for a longest time. These are the issues that are beyond the DTIC, but we end up being involved as well. Just try to, to try and ensure that our investments are, are secure. In other provinces, um, the members have been to um, 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 Ekandastria. You saw where the province is not uh, deeply involved in the initiative. Um, especially given that the DTIC, we don't own some of those assets. There's little um, that we can do. The only thing is to negotiate and facilitate them and there. And of course, management teams, many of these SCs have been struggling with capacity as well, uh, where you have SCs that uh, without CEO for a number of um, years, we have SCs that with just five people, uh, SCs that such as um, Maldi Apofo again and Gomas, if you visit them, you realize that there's serious capacity constraints here. SEZ is uh, driven by three people uh, that you can see that two of them are CEO and CFO, others are drivers and the PA. There's no way in which you can drive a massive project like this with that kind of a capacity. High turnover of critical and experienced employees. And this is mainly in the basis of frustrations that they have. Some of these officials are really dedicated, but because there's serious frustration in terms of support to unlock those uh, challenges, they end up uh, going for other greener pastures. Weak governance systems. Some of the SCZ such as uh, Maluti Apofung, they experience these challenges where you have an SCZ company, but everything is uh, controlled by the province. The SCZ doesn't even have a bank account. Um, there's no HR account. You have a board. They can't even establish committees because the committees are governed, um, are controlled by the mother parent company, FTC, and so forth. So we realize that some of this just create governance systems that make it difficult for anyone to intervene. Um, work and long-term plan, um, 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 it's also another challenge. Some of these SCZ, unlike uh, SCZ such as Musina, SC, even though it's struggling, SCZ such as uh, Dubai Trade Port. When they started with the development, they developed 40-year master plan, um, I mean, a master plan with 40-year horizon. And within that master plan, they knew that this is what we want to achieve in the next five years. This is what we achieve. We want to achieve in the next 20 years, 15 years, up to 40 years. But in some of these SCs that you realize that there's just weak or even no long-term uh, plan. Poor support from provincial and municipal government. I must say, in particularly in Gomazi and in the Maluti Apofung, that's where the challenge has been, and this is where we've been struggling to have uh, make breakthrough. In terms of the succeeding SCZ, is uh, absolutely an opposite of what I've just said. That they have clearly defined value proposition. You can see do we trade port the value proposition. I mean they in close proximity to Kinshaka Airport, the location just speaks a lot. The kind of sectors that they've identified, the kind of leadership, the level of involvement of uh, provincial governments. SCZ such as um, uh, um, Dubai Trade Port, this project was initiated around 1995, um, but you could see that the involvement of provincial government has been very strong, including that of private sector. You go into the SCZ, there is um, infrastructure that government, provincial government supported them. There is infrastructure that the private sector has helped the companies that are located there. Some of the factories are owned by the private sector. So they demonstrate the level of commitment. They were able to develop a 40 year master plan. And of course the capacity that is consistent um, has been uh, developed, um, um, appoint, uh, appointed. So you have a stable and clear governance system supported by qualified and competent board members as well as the um, uh, executives. And of course, um, support from the municipality is also paramount in SCZ such as um, 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 uh, East London, working uh, with Amatole and of course, City of Buffalo, I'm sorry, um, um, of course, uh, Etiquini in the KZN, as opposed to Maluti Apofung municipality in, in relation to uh, Maluti Apofung special economic zone um, in that province. Uh, you can go to the next lawyer. Uh, as I indicated, um, Chair, that 
We have been, as part of the new approach, we have been able to establish a PMU uh, to help us draft um, some of these projects that uh, as the DTSC we have been struggling given the capacity constraints and the um, our spread. The key amongst projects that the PMU is involved in is VAL, uh, Musina Makado, uh, the proposed uh, wild coast in Eastern Cape, Ngomazi, um, and of course, high rail corridor, the proposed pharmaceutical project uh, in the in the in the in the in the um, in the uh, um, uh, Eastern Cape, and some of the successes that we've been able to achieve again is to um, secure this investor at um, 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 Gomazi SCZ, also having been able to support them with the technical support, including relationship between stakeholders and the SCZ. Some of the issues that we needed to deal with, they relate to Sunral, some of them relate to uh, Transnet. So that is the kind of work that the um, PMU has been able to achieve us. And part of the work package that the PMU will be driving um, from now it will be the implementation of the new revamped industrial park uh, program, which I'll uh, um, define later in terms of what are the key issues that we will be focusing on in terms of um, improved um, industrial park revitalization uh, program. Um, you can go to the next slide. In terms of the money that we have spent so far and the money that we have approved, approved to date, um, we, by the time um, this uh, presentation was compiled, they were, uh, uh, we had uh, around just uh, over 11 billion approvals um, across the various SCZs. Um, to date, what we've spent is just over 10 uh, billion. Um, we can see that with the China being the biggest because we had to do everything at the go, um, infrastructure and everything. And of course, Dubai uh, Guha as well, East London, um, Dubai Trade Port, uh, Richards Bay, I desert, Saldana Bay, I desert, Uartambo, Multi Apophone. These are the current SCZs that have been supported. Um, in Atlantis, we haven't um, really uh, started supporting them uh, because they, for the longest time, again, they were struggling to establish a, a PFMA compliant company. They only got an approval from National Treasury in December. Um, they are currently compiling the application for their investments and um, would be, of course, uh, adding it to the list. But so far, Chair, this is the list of SCZs that we have supported through the infrastructure funding. Um, you can go to the next slide. So that that, that deals with, uh, Chair, with the Special Economic Zone Program. Um, now I'll be dealing with the industrial parks uh, as part of the SID projects that we are driving as the DTIC. Um, you can go to the next slide. As you know, the majority of these uh, industrial parks that we are currently supporting um, were established by the uh, uh, previous um, regime, uh, apartheid government, uh, in the homelands with the aim of uh, furthering the, um, um, the uh, apartheid special planning uh, that dealt with uh, focus on uh, segregation. Uh, thereby stimulating economic activities in where um, uh, in the main uh, our African people were residing. So many of these um, industrial parks were in the former townships and rural areas. Um, they were heavily subsidized uh, because they were generally not economically viable. Uh, but as at the time, of course, they were politically viable. So they were heavily subsidized through uh, incentives and rental subsidies. And of course, when uh, the new um, government, uh, um, uh, democratic government came in 1994, many of those uh, concessions uh, were withdrawn. And this led to closure and relocation of uh, so many businesses in those uh, cities. And of course, as I indicated, um, the establishment of those parks were not based on vi economic viability. And th so it, when they closed those uh, um, incentives, and the companies uh, were no longer viable at all. A majority of them closed, uh, international companies relocated, others located to other parts. And of course, um, one thing that I must indicate, Chair, is that DTIC does not own a single park. Uh, all the parks are owned oper and operated by provincial government and municipal government or, or their entities. Um, 
DTIC has a very, very little role as it does not have ownership, governance, or management power. We do not even have a legislation that governs the establishment and management of the parks. These parks are governed through provincial legislations. Uh, for example, in the FDC, it will be um, Free State Development Corporation Act. In Limpopo, it will be um, Lead, uh, Limpopo Economic Development Act. And of course, uh, the same as um, F, uh, Free, um, Northwest Development Corporation Act. So they are established through the Provincial Act. So as a result, the Pro DTIC had no little, uh, had no control over what happens in those uh, parks. However, given the infrastructure decay in those parks and the and the opportunity that uh, others um, had in so far as uh, appetizing um, to um, in, uh, investments, we have some of these parks that are really located in very strategic areas that can actually attract investments. Uh, you can imagine the kind of uh, factory and um, industrial parks that are located um, in Gauteng, such as Babelehi and Ekandastri. They present an opportunity for the expansion of the manufacturing um, sector or manufacturing uh, driven industrialization, including logistics. Ekandastri as an example, I mentioning this one because the honorable members have been there recently and they saw the condition. That park, um, presents an opportunity for um, reindustrialization in the Pretoria East or Emalachin uh, West or Ikurulene uh, North or even Tembesile South. So you can see that is uh, that park has an opportunity to combine and integrate um, about three provinces: Gauteng, Limpopo, Bumalanga Northwest, or even four provinces. It's in proximity to all these provinces. It's sitting at the economic hub of Gauteng is sitting at the poverty hub of Mpumalanga through Mlanga, Ekangala and so forth. So that park can really change economic landscape, but uh, you saw the infrastructure decay, the collapse, the frustrations from the investments as a result of the support that province um, has been able to, uh, 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 unable to provide uh, rather. And of course, uh, to date, we have provided support to 13 industrial parks. The, in terms of funding, the CIP um, is kept at 50 million per industrial park. We, I mean, for, per project, we have so far um, spent um, a, or approved 870 million. The implementation is focused on security upgrades, improvement of critical infrastructure and factory refurbishments. Um, this is done through a phased approach. I uh, can go to the next slide. So in terms of um, the industrial park per province, um, the currently we're sitting at just 90, um, 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 around 90 industrial parks, including the SCZs. And um, you can see in Free State, is, we've got seven, uh, seven. In the Eastern Cape, we have uh, around 15. In the Northern Cape, we have two. In Bumalanga, we have four. In Limpopo, we have six. Northwest, four. KZN, we have uh, um, 30. Western Cape, we have four. Uh, Houghton Province, we have uh, 17. In total, we have um, 90, covering um, 38 of the 52 districts. And of course, insofar as the uh, special economic zone, we are currently working on the um, five, um, 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 five proposed uh, special economic zones. You can go to the next slide. Um, so this, uh, again, just illustrate which district has what. Um, the numbers are defined on the left with the district municipalities. It also shows you which municipalities, such as uh, at, um, um, the uh, ZF Kau uh, um, in district in the Northern Cape that do not have a single industrial park. Uh, you also have others, um, such as the T9, um, that do not have uh, industrial parks. Um, such as Dr. Kenneth Gaunda in the Northwest. So this one just illustrates which uh, districts in which province uh, does not have or it has a CZ or industrial park. I can go to the next one. The next one really just gives you a, a, a summarized version and um, um, that uh, it's on the map in so far as which district has a CZ, which S district does not have anything. Uh, for example, in the Eastern Cape, we have um, Alfred Nzo District Municipality, 
that uh, so far we have not been able to establish if they have uh, industrial park, Harib, Lizuelo Buza in the Free State, Fesiletavi, and others, which in the new approach uh, would be part of the focus in so far as establishing factories. Um, uh, we'll deal with the new approach, but really our new approach focus on all the districts. We've been going to be establishing um, a, you know, industrial hubs. It may not be a CZ, it may not be industrial park, it could be SMME hub, but the opportunities will be unlocked in all the district uh, municipalities. We can go to the next slide. Um, again, this just break, uh, is just a breakdown as indicated, we currently sitting at 870 million approved. So this just if I um, tried to uh, summarize which um, um, industrial park uh, was supported with how much, starting with the Buffalo City um, in the Eastern Cape where, or in Dimbaza, rather, where we were uh, able to support through uh, 50 million. Um, recently, we've added um, 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 the Wild Coast Industrial Park, which was, uh, which was or is a proposed SCZ. We've also approved 50 million. Uh, Komani Queen Industria, um, around 70 million. Volintel, again, around 70 million in the um, Eastern Cape. Uh, Free State, um, it's a Butabelo Industrial Park. We have also established the first digital hub um, in the country. In the Free State, again, we've got Butaba, Butali Chaba, uh, supported with 50 million. In Gauteng, um, we supported the uh, Industrial Park with 100 million. This is one of those in typical industrial parks, um, uh, honorable members, where we are struggling with uh, really the governance issues. Uh, the park is in the Gauteng province, but it's, uh, in, it's one of those uh, initiatives that are owned by another province. The park is owned by um, Northwest Provincial Government through Northwest uh, Development Corporation. Now we have a situation where the park is in the infrastructural decay. Um, and the city of Tswani is uh, really willing to invest. Gaude is really willing to invest, but because they don't have ownership, and for the longest time they've been struggling, I think uh, since 1994, uh, the really provinces have been struggling to deal with that issue of uh, cross-border ownership. Ilembe district, uh, we've uh, supported Isitave. Mopani district in, uh, in Limpopo, We've supported Nguangua in the um, Mopa, um, in the Mopani district, a Sishiro Industrial Park in Polokwane, a Kandastria in the uh, in Gauteng. And you can see the confusion there saying Mpumalanga, city of Tswane, um, the same as uh, Northwest um, city of Tswane, mainly because of the challenges that I've uh, alluded to. Um, a Kandastria is owned by um, Mpumalanga provincial government, but it's in Gauteng. Um, at some point, we lobbied uh, even trying to um, um, put the money aside for expansion of the um, uh, bulk infrastructure, but they were stopped by uh, uh, MFMA that prohibits them from funding projects that they don't own or have a control. At some point, the mayor of Tswane even pronounced the, um, the support with, uh, I think it was 180 million for a industrial, but that money could not be spent on the basis of the challenges that I've alluded to. And then we have a situation where um, a mega, for example, does not even pay for rates uh, and the electricity to the city of Tswane. City of Tswane is the electricity distributor, the distribute water. Um, Bumalanga doesn't pay. And then uh, city of Tswane close off the taps. Now DTI has to come in and intervene on behalf of investments of investors because it means the investors will stop operating. So those are just the uh, challenges there, chair, that we're currently dealing with uh, in the industrial park. And then uh, we have uh, Harangua in the northwest uh, in the in Gauteng, owned by industrial park and uh, owned by Northwest Provincial Government. This one is the worst affected. Um, even the kind of looting that is happening there, the community just looting the uh, factory buildings and material um, daylight. Uh, there's no security. Security is supposed to be provided by the province. Now, this uh, it's a risk for the DTS in terms of revitalization because we really can't revitalize the industrial park that is not viable. We put infrastructure 
the following day is looted. There's no security. You ask the, the, uh, the, the, FD, uh, Northwest Development Corporation, they tell you that they don't have money for the security. The province has to give them money. Now, how they is saying, give us the infrastructure, we'll manage it. From the DTI side, we're also saying, you can also give it to the private sector to run it, uh, because really, as a provincial government, you are able to run it. Uh, we have uh, Bujanala Platinum District, uh, Mukhwasi, which is also a proposed SCZ, as indicated with the new approach, we decided that once we identified a, an opportunity, uh, even prior to the designation, if there are investments that can locate in that uh, particular industrial park or proposed SCZ, they would be supported through other means which amongst them is a uh, critical infrastructure funding. So we've been supporting some of this proposed um, special economic zone with that infrastructure to accommodate um, the investment, but also to increase the, um, the viability of those SCZ. And uh, you can go to the next one. So this again, um, just uh, summarizes the job creation by the uh, each industrial park um, I think industrial part, uh, we are saying as the DTI provides significant employment opportunity for respective uh, regions. In the main, uh, when you go to these park, uh, parks, they are mainly accommodating uh, SMMEs. Um, you hardly find big companies there. They're mainly SMMEs. Yes, they are then they, they are big companies, but in the main, the industrial parks have been very strategic and significant to the regional economies and national economy through the support of uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, the jobs in the, in, the, in the parks include semi-skilled to skilled individuals, uh, they are predominantly in sectors such as agro-processing, light manufacturing, uh, which include um, textile. And of course, um, in terms of uh, youth and female uh, participation, um, we, through our assessment, we actually established that it's quite low. We um, would wish um, and, and, and strive to ensure that we um, 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 increase that. So we have also increased the addition of uh, new industrial parks um, such as Apintin in the Northern Cape, and of course, uh, Gomani. We've also included new industrial parks such as Wild Coast SCZs uh, that may not necessarily be on the list, um, including Duba, uh, proposed Dubazi, um, proposed Fetahomo Dubazi SCZ, and of course, Val River City SCZ. So while we're dealing with the um, um, approval processes, legislative process of approving the SCZs, we immediately um, unlock some of these investments through the um, industrial park uh, program. So these are um, jobs as indicated. Uh, we have uh, some of these uh, parks uh, that contribute uh, really significantly, such as uh, Isitebe uh, being the biggest of them all. Uh, others uh, such as um, Putari Chawa, Wachabelo also in, uh, contributing significantly in terms of job creation, Wabelehi also in terms of uh, job creation. So we do have those um, um, industrial parks that really add value in terms of uh, job creation. But I think uh, overall performance, we uh, recognize that uh, this is uh, modest um, um, in, um, given what would uh, expect these parks uh, to contribute to the economy. You can go to the next slide. Again, um, this uh, slide just uh, illustrates the, um, the uh, uh, contribution per sector. Um, majority, majority of, as indicated, majority of these uh, tenants in the industrial parks are actually um, SMMEs in the manufacturing, uh, especially in the cleaning uh, products, food and beverages, um, such as uh, gems, archers, and bakeries, uh, wood and metal works, such as furniture. And of course, uh, also have textile, construction. Um, these are the sectors that you will generally find in the in the uh, industrial parks uh, supporting the um, SMMEs. Uh, can go to the next uh, slide. Now, part of uh, challenges that we've experienced, you can see the on the um, right we identifying main challenges that we're experiencing and continue to experience in the industrial park. You will see the kind of industrial parks where. Generally, we're experiencing almost every single challenge that we've listed. Lack of security and patrols, vandalism of infrastructure, break-ins, frequent power supply disruption, water supply disru uh, disruptions, service delivery protests, 
um, um, relocation by investments due to poor services, extreme deterioration of uh, infrastructure, poverty, uh, property inversions and tenants' bad debt, bad debt, industrial, which is where honorable members um, visited. We're experiencing almost all these challenges, followed by Babelehi and Harangua. They are all in Gauteng, not owned by Gauteng, but owned by other provinces. So this demonstrate again, um, it, you can immediately see that part of the challenge is this ownership structure that we continue to be subjected to. And of course, in Limpopo and Guangua, uh, is also experiencing a significant number of uh, the challenges and the Gomani as well. Uh, we're experiencing some of these challenges. The only SCZ where it's only one uh, challenge is, um, is, um, is it ever in the KZN, where, of course, um, from time to time, we're experiencing uh, service delivery protests. But in the main, uh, Chair, I must indicate that the industrial park uh, have got serious challenges that uh, we immediately need to deal with, and key amongst them relate to how they are governed or managed. I can go to the next step. So these are the lessons learned, uh, Chair. Um, we are saying that the existing industrial park program has not uh, produced significant changes in terms of jobs, investments, and what we seek to drive, which is regional industrialization. And of course, all of them, they are experiencing infrastructure decay. Many of them do not even have maintenance plan and are badly managed. Um, the, the majority of these uh, parks, post 1994, even uh, when they request for the refurbishment um, uh, funding, there is no solid or concrete uh, uh, business plan that demonstrate the viability. That is not to say they are not viable, but they are not backed by any uh, uh, business plan. Uh, they're just uh, managing them like um, they are in the property or real estate project. Um, in response to the challenges, uh, DTI um, has come up with the, a number of uh, um, uh, key principles that will drive the a new implementation of the industrial parks program. Uh, key amongst them, um, if the many uh, uh, honorable members um, agree uh, or support, will be the change in the ownership and management of targeted industrial park to include the uh, involvement of provincial, national, and municipalities. Um, and of course, that would also include the cross-border challenges that I've uh, mentioned related to Ekandastria, Babelech, and Harangua. Uh, parks must have proper management structure in place. At the moment, there is no single park that has a management company. All the parks are managed uh, provincially um, with the management sitting at the provincial offices using the money that is generated from those parks to pay salaries at the provincial level. No, man no maintenance uh, supporting them, no financial systems for the park. If you were to ask for the financial statement for individual park, I doubt you would get. And uh, of course, we are saying that there should be a proper financial support systems in place for the park, revitalization of the industrial park. And that proper uh, financial support system, it should be across spheres of government. It cannot be that uh, DTI is a panacea. DTI funding would address uh, all the challenges that we experience in the park within this uh, financial constraint, where now many of our things we are not planned to be dealing with challenges in case of and COVID challenges. So it can't be that the burden of uh, revitalizing the park um, um, lies only with the DTIC. We're saying all spheres of government must contribute to this infrastructure development. And of course, or the, the parks that will be supported. So it's no longer being going to be where provinces just submit funding for refurbishment of a factory. And then a few months down the line, we go to that factory is occupied by a dry clean or a church. We are saying that when we, when we revitalize the park from the outside the spheres of government, we should target parks, have some uh, business plan, including financial contribution from all spheres of government, including a viability plan that we can go and sell even to the private sector if the state cannot afford the development. So they must all have bankable business plan. We must out from the outset agree that we're going to change even the management structure. We cannot be that um, we rely on the uh, um, institutional arrangements that have failed. And of course, the focus um, would be on the development of the district economy rather than the just defense enclaves. 
uh, as opposed to uh, as um, to current arrangement where the focus has just been to go and intervene in a country build a um, um, sewage system reticulation structure and so forth we are saying that the plan uh, would be about new special development framework that takes into cognizance the activities that Ikuruleni is implementing towards the north of um, a port, the things that the Emalakhene is implementing in terms of energy um, 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 sector. Do we need to take advantage of that energy sector, develop renewable energy going to the um, west of Emalakhene? From Pretoria East, currently we have um, an even special planning where every development is just driven by a real estate housing development no um, um, economic activities happening. So we are saying as we develop ec the economy of China towards the east, let us take advantage of uh, eco industry and stimulate more economic opportunities. Um, the Tembesile or uh, Kangala region, um, we need to ensure that we support the communities there and stimulate economic activities in that region where they are absolutely depressed um, 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 regions. And of course, we are saying that the new model must allow private sector ownership. At the moment, most of this industrial park are owned by government. The infrastructure is, has collapsed. Investors want to locate in the park. They can't locate in those uh, uh, collapsed uh, structures. The provinces um, cannot contribute towards the refurbishment of those factories. The parks, because they use money for uh, other things, they are unable to revitalize those uh, factories. So we are saying where private sector want to develop, we must actually agree um, as government that we, perhaps we, it's about time that we have quotas where we allow private sector to develop their own uh, factories and operate them, as opposed to this uh, model where we just build factories for rental collection and we don't even maintain them. So those are some of the key issues that we would be putting forward in the new approach. We'll deal with them later. Um, we can go to the next slide. So this slide, of course, we are saying, having mentioned all these uh, special initiatives uh, through special economic zones and industrial park, what are the poli uh, policy constraints? What has been the impact and what are the opportunities? So this is part C that would deal with those issues. Um, Chair, some of these challenges would be similar, but we want we just needed, we just needed to break them down so that you are able to see the size of the challenges uh, that we are dealing with. Key amongst them would be um, on special economic zones, the key uh, community engagement strategies at the SCZ level. There has been a poor community engagement in some of these SCZs that are struggling. That is why we would have uh, community protests, um, capacity constraints in SCZs, um, and of course, uh, also um, linked to the poor support from uh, provinces. And of course, um, poor support from Province poor governance systems, funding arrangements. We are unable to secure funding from other spheres of government to stimulate more economic activities beyond the SCZ. Service delivery at the municipal level. And of course, in terms of industrial parks, I've dealt with the issues to say generally poor governance. Um, there are no institutional structures dealing directly with the parks. Rental collections uh, used to subsidize other things, lack of policy, lack of funding instruments social cohesion where you have uh, serious uh, um, challenges related to community protests in all the parks. You can go to the next slide. Um, this has been the impact um, as indicated as a result of all these challenges, we've had a modest performance, slow implementation of uh, several special plans, inability to optimize beneficiation of our resource endowments, including minerals and ag other agricultural produce, Continuous collapse in infrastructure and industrial parks, inadequate in, um, investments into the SCZs and the parks, low level of accountability in provinces where they manage all these uh, parks. You can go to the next slide. They may try to move faster, Chair. These are the opportunities that we have established to say there has to be a new change in ownership, governance, in terms of management. Of course, in terms of uh, uh, market repositioning that relates to the um, value proposition for the parks that will be supporting. And of course, upscaling the role of the national PMU to include other special initiatives such as uh, industrial parks. And of course, uh, funding to say that it must be secured from all private uh, I mean, spheres of government, private sector, 
and of course um, in, include all, um, alternative uh, funding models that would involve the private sector, stakeholder coordination, uh, also ensure that there is um, um, incentives at the local level for SME, especially for SMEs to make them thrive and participate in the mainstream economy. You can go to the next slide. So this is the last uh, section, uh, Chair, that now um, 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 consolidate all these uh, challenges um, um, and opportunities. And key amongst them, um, it's what is that what we uh, DM has spoken about that we're going to have now in special the industrial development model that address all these challenges that we have spoken about. You can go to the next slide. So we are saying that uh, since 1994, um, since the collapse of those uh, incentives, we have seen the manufacturing sector going down. Of course, all these challenges, we can't attribute them to the SEZ program or industrial pro program. They are part of what's happening in the country, but they have not yielded results um, uh, um, as much as we expected in terms of creating the expanding the manufacturing sector and also creating the new industrial hubs in regions that have been depressed but have potential. So we have established this new approach to ensure that um, we expand those model, uh, those models. And of course, the these are based on the lessons learned um, from the existing um, um, SID model. We will be implementing all this um, 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 th this new approach um, uh, to ensure that we have a uh, um, aligned special industrial development that is um, sub um, supported by a single plan within each district and municipalities, of course, using district model as a point of uh, reference. Of course, our intention is to help re-engineer the role of district and municipalities within the economy, and of course, ultimately to establish um, new hubs uh, and expand the existing ones with a view to attract new investments and create jobs. We can go to the next slide. This is just the rationale uh, of the new um, uh, expanded uh, new special industrial development model to say that uh, the rationale is to outline policy levers that would be uh, utilized uh, for the purpose of unlocking um, the Latin economic opportunities in underdeveloped regions uh, or districts in the country. I uh, would also use this to identify key special industrial development opportunities in all districts in various uh, sectors and a foster a national economy that ensures all districts have viable and productive um, space economy. Uh, support special industrialization of all districts through targeted special initiatives that go beyond industrial parks and special economic zones. If, for example, there are companies that want to locate in a particular district but can't be located in the industrial park, those investments must be supported regardless of where they are located. Address binding constraints inhibiting the regions from realizing their full development potential, and of course, facilitating strategic and broad-based partnerships, which in our view is what led to failures of the, some of these initiatives. Uh, we can go to the next one. So this is just the uh, outcomes uh, um, indicators. We are saying um, this uh, program must uh, lead to the emergence of new industrial hubs, um, it must lead to increased number of uh, investments. It must in, uh, lead to increased number of uh, value-added exports. Of course, um, increased number of uh, jobs created um, in each uh, sector, but also increased uh, beneficiation of our resource endowment. So overall, this is what we'd want to see as an outcome of um, the um, uh, this new model, of course, uh, linked to our overaching um, um, outcomes that are industrialization, transformation, and capable state. You can go to the next one. These are key issues that we'll be dealing with in so far as the new approach. Key amongst them, as I indicated, um, we cannot afford to be spectators or um, financial intermediary as the DTIC, but we'll be directly involved in the ownership and management of these projects. Um, so all the SCZs that will be designated DTI using, having used the TASES model that has worked, we would be involved in driving those SCZs. And of course, the national PMU would also be there to provide uh, support to this SCZ. Uh, and we're saying that we need to ensure that all spheres of government are properly aligned and properly capacitated because at the moment we are really struggling in the provinces that I've mentioned. 
uh, we need to develop strong and credible investment promotion and facilitation plans, working with the investment SA. Um, and part of the new approach is that um, we, as the DTIC family, will be embracing the this SDIs in all the branches and we will all uh, contribute towards that. And part of that would be for is, uh, ESA to help to ensure that the attraction and uh, um, retention of investments in all the um, SID, whether it's SCs or industrial park, are supported. Um, community involvement and facilitation, um, part of the challenges that I've mentioned in Sufai's industrial park is um, community protest, um, the mushrooming of business forums. So we are saying as, uh, to deal with those things, we would have credible plans to be developed. Uh, also learning from Tazas, this is where we're able to immediately subdue all those uh, challenges. Uh, can go to the next one. Uh, next slide. And of course, uh, incentive uh, support, or oh, sorry, incentive support, uh, hybrid model, uh, we're saying the private sector now must be given a role to play in so in the projects uh, in the SCZ and outside SCZ in Dazra parks. Um, funding partnership approach is recommended given capacity constraint and fiscal constraints, including uh, what I've said that private sector participation in industrial infrastructure projects um, must be uh, also um, uh, taken in consideration. And of course, institutions such as IDC, NEF, Subsida, CIFA uh, would have a role to play in supporting the SID projects. And of course, uh, there are a number of um, factories uh, or investments that um, IDC has already supported in various uh, SCZs um, 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 that we currently supporting. Um, strong private sector participation, I've spoken about that. Support to struggling projects, whether it's an SCZ or an industrial park, we are saying the strong support will be provided to fix SCZ parks. Those that cannot be fixed or work will be sold or closed. So we are saying that if the projects are no longer viable, a consideration has to be made on whether we sell or close to ensure that we support only viable uh, projects in the country. You can go to the next one. Um, Chair, I indicated that we'll just illustrate how the new special industrial development model would, uh, would, uh, would be rolled out. For example, here we're using Houting as a city region. This is a slide that at some point I presented to the uh, provincial ESCO of uh, Houting province, whereas the DTIC were just illustrating the potential that Houting, at the time, we're still lobbying them to support Tswano Automotive SCZ. So we're saying that in order for them to realize the, uh, uh, the idea of uh, building Houting as a city region, there are a number of um, opportunities and hubs that they can uh, develop. So we identified these hubs in Houting to say, if we are to focus on this, they would be able to catalyze in many other opportunities because this will be developed as corridors. And we included the parks that are not necessarily owned by them, Ekandastria, Vavelehe, and Harangua. So they have since embraced this and they've uh, started working on the identification and planning for a number of hubs in the region. Key amongst them um, have been Tazes and um, 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 Val River City SCZ. Val River City SCZ, uh, Val SCZ or proposed Val SCZ is focusing on building the economic hub in the Sivan district, um, focusing on number of opportunities that exist in various um, pieces of uh, land or in various sections of the district. As I indicated, there will be an uh, anchor SCZ that is fenced for purpose of tax incentive, but our approach is to ensure that we develop the entire region, focusing on everything that would catalyze the development, whether it's um, water issues that the district is currently facing, the sewage issues, we will be focusing on that. When we establish a company, we position that company as semi-agency to ensure that they implement industrial park they implement SCZ. Already, uh, Chair, there has been two priority investments that have been secured, and they've planned um, a, a break, uh, breaking ground within the current uh, financial year. These investments are valued at 3.8 billion. These are from <clears throat> um, not a designated area, but because we are saying 
when we, this, when we identify opportunity, we're going to embark on the implementation with or without SEZ. SEZ must be a sweetener. SEZ must not be an outcome of our development, but must be a sweetener. Um, and of course, uh, we also got in um, some investment from uh, Chinese investment that is uh, set to locate near Midval SCZ. And of course, um, there are other SCZs that are currently under consideration. But as I indicated, Chair, the intention is to drive this new model through a district approach where we are saying we're going to focus on a particular district. And as government, through um, spheres of government, holding uh, national government, municipalities, we're going to work with the private sector to ensure that we develop all those uh, regions, focusing on different projects and uh, in different locations. You can go to the next slide. So this is the last slide share, um, just focusing on the way forward. So as I indicated, the, this is the integrated approach with intervention and the key uh, amongst the interventions that the DTSU uh, family has immediately started to undertake in this country financial year is that um, we integrating our SID initiatives across 10 branches of the DTIC. All branches will be playing a role. Uh, key amongst those roles will be establishment and support of SCZ um, and industrial parks, establishment and support to digital hubs, identification of viable um, uh, SID initiatives um, in every district, re, uh, re, uh, uh, report in identifying private, private sector nodes um, that can be supported, participate uh, in the investment mobilization drive for our SIDs, and of course, uh, others related to the establishment of new one-stop shops to facilitate investments and integration of interventions by in DTIC and its uh, DT, uh, entities in uh, District 1 plan. Of course, the uh, dashboard of intervention by the DTIC and its uh, entities for all districts uh, in the country. So that would include the support from the our entities such as SAB, such as NEF and IDC, compile reports on the work completed on the integration of trans industrialization, transformation, implementation of uh, sector master plans in various uh, districts. And of course, targeted industrial financing uh, support in the nine provinces, as well as metro metropolitan uh, municipalities and districts. So in totality, this is um, the work package that the DTIC family is currently undertaking to ensure that uh, we realize the objectives of the integrated approach to spatial transformation and industrialization. With that, Chair, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, leave my video off because um, my computer's telling me that my network is unstable. Um, before I note the hands that are coming up, I want to give Deputy Minister Majola and Deputy Minister Gina um, uh, an opportunity. I know that um, there was a statement made by the presenter that uh, Deputy Minister Majola will speak more on, I think, uh, the Nkomaz uh, SEZ. So uh, may I just check with the Deputy Ministers? I know Joanne, Honorable Mulder, and I'll start taking hands as we proceed. You must unmute, Deputy Minister. Yeah, okay, you unmute. I have, I have, I have Chairperson. Thanks, thanks very much, and uh, good morning. Good morning to you, Chairperson, and uh, uh, the honourable members. The uh, Deputy Minister Gina is uh, to leave now. I don't know if she's still in the platform, and uh, the the rest of the team from the DTIC and the parliamentary support staff. Chair, I do recognize that uh, we, 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 we now have uh, time constraints. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, uh, today we bring into the portfolio committee in, what, in that lengthy presentation by Mr. Molifan, uh, but, uh, the, something that presents uh, two main messages. Uh, so if we're to ask, but what is the storyline? So the main storyline is this, with regard to special economic zones and, and the, the industrial parks uh, and their evolution. 
Firstly, that in the first phase of uh, 2010, so we designated a few IDZs which were located at our port of entry, port of entry, and we have uh, seen Kuha and the East London um, in IDZ uh, being the success stories out of that period. When uh, the in 2014, when the SEZ Act was promulgated and new SEZs were uh, designated, you can see here from the, what Mr. Mulefan has presented that we have struggled to make progress with regard to those new designated SEZs. The long and short of it is that that period of, after the designation has not been a story of success. Thirdly, uh, we are we are we are saying that we are now entering a new phase uh, with regard to the SEZs and the and the industrial parks. This is based on the August 2019 directive by a cabinet that uh, Mr. Mulefan referred to, and our, our new uh, special industrial development model. So. We are now acting as the DTSC, acting directly and want to give confidence to members uh, of, uh, of parliament that we are now acting directly as the, as the DTSC in the SEZ and we are making, we think we are making good progress. We will now integrate our work in the SEZ with uh, the work we're doing in the industrial parks as we endeavor to drive a coordinated economic development in each of our 52 dis districts in line with the DDM model. So the, the president has instructed us, I want to see a significant industrial activity in each of our 52 districts. So we're now driving the, the, the special economic zones and the, uh, and the industrial parks in a coordinated way to ensure that uh, we can show in each of our 52 districts that there's a significant industrial uh, activity that uh, uh, would be would be driven. Uh, we are fast tracking uh, and upscaling our work in various SEZs. And I just want to give you these examples. The, the, the story of OR Tambo, which was long designated, it's a self story. And uh, now what has happened is the, the PMU that uh, Mr. Lionel October now leads, has dispatched a multidisciplinary team of experts, which is now focusing on ensuring that uh, we can finish the construction of the top structures at our town. In Musina Maka, where uh, Mr. Modifan has indicated that we've been having difficulties, our team is there now, currently in Limpopo, and that's where he's presenting from, uh, to ensure that we can fast track our work in both Fitahomu, Tubati, and in Musina Makado, especially the part that doesn't have difficulties of Musina Makado that with, uh, with EIAs that he has referred to. So in Ngomazi, we, we're having a visit there next week, Thursday, to ensure that uh, we can start acting more rapidly with Sandral, with Transnet, to ensure that uh, this large logistics company, uh, Dubai Port World, can locate uh, very soon in the industrial park so that it can begin to attract other investors into Nkomas. We think that we will break ground uh, in the next uh, few months uh, in Nkomas. In We're doing the same thing in Saldana Bay. We're doing the same thing in Namarpa. We're doing the same thing in Wild Coast. Uh, we were there last week to meet with the colleagues in the province to fast track the process in the wild in the wild coast. With our experience from other countries, Honorable Chair, we believe that SEZ and industrial parks can play a significant role in our economy. We want to elevate the role of SEZ in our economic growth path. That is to elevate and upscale the role and place of SEZ in the economy and in economic development. For example, and I want to return to Nkomazi. Nkomazi, uh, with the location of uh, Dubai Port World uh, as a major logistics company. So 
it has the possibility and the potential to change the landscape, not of not of Omar's local municipality, but of the province as a whole. Uh, it can serve as a logistics and a major agro-processing hub that is linked to the African continental free trade area. So we must be more bold and we must be more ambitious. And we think that uh, the Nkomasi, the Nkomasi uh, um, SEZ holds enormous uh, potential uh, for, for, for the government and the people of South Africa. Mr. Malifan says uh, that uh, we're looking at the possibility of the rail corridor between Silverton and the uh, Gaber. I must say, Chairperson, it's not a possibility. We have a deadline from Ford that by 2025, they would need a rail corridor that connects Silverton to, to Quebec. So we could extend that slightly to 2026. The ramping up of Ford production of up to 220 units is dependent on the ability to move those vehicles from Silverton to the port. So it's not a question of if. So we're going to have to ensure that the, the, the project of the rail corridor between Silverton and Kebeha does succeed and we can meet the deadline at least the latest by 2026. So that's all I wanted to add, uh, Chairperson, and uh, I do recognize that we're running slightly out of time, uh, but thanks very much for the opportunity. We can take questions and we can come back uh, at closer, Chair, with, uh, with your, your, your permission. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. And I note that uh, DM uh, Gina is off the platform already. We received her apology at the start of the meeting. Um, I already have some questions uh, that has been in the chat. I don't know members are traveling to uh, parliament. Uh, yesterday was a public holiday. We do understand that. Uh, can I then just, I have Honorable McPherson, Honorable Mulder, can I just check for other hands, please? Otherwise, we can proceed with Honorable McPherson, uh, Honorable Burns, Mamashe. Okay, if I may, yes. uh, Mr. Thring submitted questions. I forwarded that on to the DTIC's yeah, he's an office where they have these questions as well, Chair. Okay, that's great. I did ask him to put it on the chat, but I think he was in his other meeting already yeah. at, that, at that time. And Thank then, you. Honorable Malamicha. So far, so let's start with Honorable McPherson. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, I'm sorry I can't put my camera on. I'm, I'm in the office at the moment, and the Wi Fi is not the best in the Marks building. You know, I, I find the presentation that's been given to us incredibly frustrating. And I'll tell you why, Chair. Because five years ago, when the department, and maybe it was before then, decided that it wanted to embark on this industrial park um, uh, policy, I warned them then and have warned them for the last five years that the project was doomed to fail um, if there was no business plan that was put together and if there were no concessions that had been uh, agreed to by either local government or provincial government. Uh, the attitude of the department, the then minister, uh, was that you know they would just throw sort of large amounts of money at the project that actually all that business wanted was um, the uh, infrastructure he developed, uh, sort of new fences, lights, uh, you know, part holes fixed, and that would be uh, sufficient. Um, and you know, they had budgeted 500 million rand, and clearly a lot more has been spent. And probably when you put the entire amount together, I suspect probably about a billion rand has been sunk into this project um, over the last five years. And when I, you know, when I put this towards the then committee, the then minister, the then uh, uh, um, uh, director general, and said, you know, that that's not how business works, 
that they need a business plan. They need to actually understand why will these parks succeed? What is in it for them? And what are the concessions required? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, anyone who obviously would know history and would know why those parks were set up, they were set up under the uh, uh, apartheid government to try and locate some form of work in what was then referred to as the former homelands. And that work, by and large, was uh, uh, w- w- was cheaper labor than in urban centers. And so businesses effectively located there, particularly manufacturing businesses, because uh, labor was cheaper there. So you know, rightly or wrongly, that's what the concession was. And that's why they existed there, because they were in rural far-flung areas. Now, for any business to go and invest in those parks today would require some form of concession to make it financially viable for them to be there. And still today, that has never been done. And still today, the business plan has never been produced. And when I highlighted all of this, Chair, five years ago, do you know what the response of the minister and colleagues then was? that I was racist, that I was racist because I wanted black people to remain unemployed and that any and all of my questions towards these parks were clearly indicative of that racism. Well, actually, today, this presentation has proved all of my points and all of my concerns and all of my injections to be entirely right because the department has now admitted that they should have actually had a business plan, that concessions still don't exist, And that, in fact, the business parks or industrial parks are probably worse today than they were five years ago, despite all the money that's been spent. And I think that that's a real travesty, actually, because if we had actually listened to one another and taken on concerns and not just dismissed them as racist or as grandstanding or point scoring or whatever some colleagues uh, from other parties want to ever classify concerns as we wouldn't be sitting in this problem today and again it is another uh, 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 shame on this committee that actually you know we pay lip service to actually listening to concerns or issues from members of the opposition and we've probably wasted a billion rand in five years uh, on these industrial parks that have actually amounted to very little And I think that that's actually a travesty for the country and for those people who desperately need uh, employment. I really think that actually the department needs to re-look long and hard as to, you know, the concept of industrial parks and SEZs. Because, you know, you can have all of these SEZs, but unless they are actual financial uh, incentives and there are concessions and there are reasons for businesses to be located in them and we can't even say that it's well you know for infrastructure because infrastructure is falling apart transnet doesn't work so they can't go on rail i i I mean it's becoming very very difficult to sell a business case for an sez unless a business is already located there at present And I think that this committee needs to grapple itself with the kind of money and investment that continues to take place in these industrial parks and SEZs and whether it's actually financially viable and worth it and whether actually there is any benefit to the economy uh, and to, to job creation. Because I'm finding it very difficult five years later to, to, to justify the continued uh, expense. And I'm sure that colleagues will continue to call me racist for pointing that out, but the facts speak for themselves. Uh, and, and I really do, again, Chair, you know, that this is another case in point of where this committee doesn't want to hear the truth, doesn't want to hear the facts, wants to play party politics and wants to continue to ignore rational advice um, only for you know, essentially has to come in years to come and say, I told you so. And let me say, Chair, that I get no pleasure out of being able to say that. I get no pleasure out of being able to say I was right and everyone else was wrong because it's the people of this country that pay the price for that. And I really do hope that at some point, at some time, 
uh, in the future, that the department, the minister, and members of this committee will actually start listening to what members of the opposition say, what experts start to say, and we can stop wasting time and stop wasting money like we have now finally admitted uh, is the case on industrial parks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honourable McPherson. Honourable Mulder. Thank you, Honourable Chair, uh, Honourable Deputy Minister, colleagues, officials. Um, I will be short with my question. Uh, it, it's, it's very much in the line of uh, what, what Honourable McPherson asked, but if I refer, can refer to page 42 of the presentation with the heading uh, describing or speaking to the existing spatial instruments and constraints, it's quite clear to me and should be to the committee that the government in general is not able to sustain special economic zones and the industries because of poor service delivery or lack of service delivery. It is quite common knowledge that local government is in a state where um, constant water, road, and, and uh, other services supplies is not sustainable. And um, it's been said on page 42, if you refer to ESCOM, is not able to supply regular electricity or electricity on a regular basis. In other words, in, to put it in short, the state, the government, is not able to support the projects as described in this report, um, the special, special economic zones. In saying that, I would ref like to also refer to page 14, the special economic zones performance um, column that we've got there, where it says that 22 billion rands been spent and 19,000 jobs been created. If I understand it correctly, that roughly means, and it's not that simple that one job created came at the cost of more than 1 million rand. So my question in, in short is, um, how sustainable is it? Do you, if, if I'm wrong, if I say that this whole project is not sustainable, especially taking into account that government is not able to provide supporting services, the economy is still recovering from state capture and from COVID-19 um, regulations. Is it sustainable, according to the, the Deputy Minister and the Department, uh, to carry on like this? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Mulder. Honourable Burns Ngamashi. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Honourable Chairperson, um, and, and, and greetings to members um, of the committee. Maybe, Chairperson, what we need to do uh, first is to welcome uh, the presentation, which was quite uh, comprehensive, uh, brutally frank, honest and genuine uh, in that where the department has performed well, the department has managed to indicate uh, those areas and where there were weaknesses or where there are weaknesses. The department is uh, quite clear in identifying those, not only identifying those, but there's also a plan in terms of how to uh, mitigate uh, those kind of weaknesses, which is something that um, is very important uh, for uh, South Africans uh, to always hear. Um, Precisely because we, we are always with our people. We, we live with them. 
we understand, we know exactly what their challenges are. Even the kind of challenges that we have, um, largely they are of a historical nature. You know, if there's any tragedy that was committed by both colonial and apartheid systems was uh, to alienate uh, our people who constitute the majority, deprive them of all uh, the opportunities, be they educational, be they access to finance, but just to reduce them to um, 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 uh, labor um, um, uh, pawns for exploitation. So um, that this current government um, in its um, policy and programs, they are predicated on a conscious transformative imperatives. It is quite encouraging and the entire presentation seeks to achieve exactly that, which is about inclusive economy, which is about ensuring that we break from uh, the conglomer conglomerates, <coughs> excuse me, which are <coughs> largely <coughs> favoring the oligopolies that are um, more um, in pushing the interests um, of um, the a few uh, 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 white uh, industrialists. That's the reality. And uh, we, 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 we cannot apologize for uh, trans, um, transformational imperatives which are at play. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> it's, a, it's, a, it's a government policy, it's an ANC uh, policy, and not only the ANC policy, but it is the policy of all those who seek to ensure that uh, the kind of uh, economic trajectory we are following as a country is actually inclusive. And, 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 and that's what, um, that, that's the essence of um, the, 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 the presentation. With that as it may, um, 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 uh, Chairperson, one is tempted uh, to ask the following questions. Um, yes, we appreciate uh, the fact that um, um the 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 there are uh, SEZs that are uh, classified as good performing. For instance, your Island and ITZ, uh, your Kucha, um a part of those IDZs, um, the extent of their uh, positive and uh, successful a functional capacity, among other things, um, is um, given a lot of boost from the automotive um, sector. Now, let's take East London, for instance. Um, we, we have the, 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 the IDZ, uh, where there are tenants who are manufacturers, especially uh, on the area of the components. Now, what we would want to check as part of uh, promoting transformation, are there, um, or rather, how many of the industrialists or entrepreneurs for that matter, who are there, who are black uh, within that sector? It's going to be important uh, to get a sense of uh, that so that at least 
we, 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 we are quite responsive to that uh, critical and important uh, transformation uh, imperative. Secondly, Chair, um, we, 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 we must acknowledge uh, the fact that uh, for us to succeed, um, we must make sure that all spheres of government and including any organ and institution relevant to the task at hand should work together. And working together is not just something, a gentleman's agreement. It's a constitutional imperative. It gives effect to section 40 and 41 of the constitution, which is about cooperative governance. So where, uh, where while recognizing the distinctness of the spheres of government, but uh, we equally acknowledge the fact that these spheres of government are interrelated and interdependent. So which, which, which then enjoins them uh, to work together. Now, in the context of the district development model, um, we, 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 we would want to see uh, results. We would want to see clear programs that enhance that kind of an integrated approach, which brings everyone on board. And, and, and um, with, 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 with practical um, examples, I would be happy if those could be lifted just to demonstrate uh, the, in, in practical terms uh, what is it that is being um, advanced in that front. And the, 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 the third question, um, Honorable Chair, um, DTIC, it, um, especially when we look at uh, trade and uh, industrialization opportunities, you know, in, 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 in the context of African continental free trade uh, area or agreement. Um, we, 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 we are very much interested in seeing the serious participation of our people in the mainstream economy, not just be kept in the periphery and be considered to be a participating. Um, gone are those days that uh, our people will only be reduced uh, to, to, to what I, 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 I characterize as a tribe scope, that uh, their participation will only be limited to them selling tribe. I'm not, I'm not actually discounting the importance of that uh, business, but... Uh, um, 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 how do we create opportunities uh, for our people uh, as manufacturers in particular and, and, and also as, 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 as people involved uh, in trade and industrialization? Uh, how do we ensure that their participation uh, finds uh, expression and there's a clear footprint um, that is beyond the borders of South Africa. Uh, that which is looking at the regional as well as the continent in the framework with or in the context of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. You see, we can't continue, um, Honorable Chair, uh, as South Africa and the continent and the region with all the natural endowments that we have um, all that we are worth is to be um, um, relegated into the periphery of raw material producers when it comes to uh, processing and all of that uh, those are exported 
and brought back to the continent uh, with uh, the value. And in the course of doing that, by exporting that raw material, we're ex actually exporting jobs. And, 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 and so I would be happy to get a deliberate and conscious plan in that front to ensure that um, we, 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 we create conditions that will be conducive for the South African regional continental goods to be processed here. And by the time uh, they are exported, they are exported as finished products. So, which means now we need practical um, 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 functionality on the part of the African continental free trade agreement. Lastly, um, Chair, is it not time that the department could um, have an outreach uh, program, whether you call it outreach in Daba, where all of this is shared with uh, the broader populace of South Africa? I'm saying this uh, precisely because, Chair, uh, there are areas like um, Butterworth, uh, you know, uh, with the uh, industrial park, which is currently uh, dead. There are areas like Dimaza where you can see that there is some work being done. And yes, I accept the fact that these may have been part of um, consolidating uh, apartheid pseudo Pandustan states. And those apartheid pseudo Pandustan states were an establishment supported by the National Party government, uh, which then uh, had the Democratic Party and all these other parties, uh, by the way, which uh, combined later to form the Democratic Alliance. You know, so historic, these are historical... Sorry, you forgot that the National Party joined the ANC, just as a point of correction, thanks. Order, Honorable McPherson. Order, 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 order. McPherson. All I'm saying, uh, Chair, is that uh, the current Democratic Alliance, uh, we are not oblivious of its uh, history in, in terms of its direct participation in the resolve of consolidating uh, apartheid um, as, as part of legitimizing colonialism because they had a program to um, make sure that uh, our people are excluded in the mainstream economy. So we are not going to be apologize for that. We'll never be apologetic. But what, I'm, what, what, what Chair, I want to propose is an INDABA um, in all these provinces where DTIC will not be seen as this department that is aloof, that is uh, far away from the communities, but as it must be part of the daily um, 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 fun functional uh, capability of our communities. And, and, and I would uh, suggest yeah. that uh, uh, the department considers that uh, for to, so as to ensure that uh, we provide our people with information. You know, Chair, with information, you are empowered. You know, information is power. And we, that's how we should be doing as, 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 as the department. Make sure that we empower our people with information so that uh, they can uh, understand uh, the importance of these programs and create conducive uh, conditions for uh, inclusive economy to thrive, which is an antithesis of what 
the Democratic Alliance stands for. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Burns Mamashi. Honorable Malamacha. No, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to Deputy Ministers, my colleagues. Let me take this opportunity to start by saying it will be wrong of me to allow to die silence. And it will be good of me that I speak my mind so to assist because it's like we are begging to govern, whereas we are in charge. And that alone, it makes those that benefited some years ago to continue laughing at us as if we are not aware that we are in charge. Allow me to say, comrades, People are sick and tired of these good plans, but when you go to the ground, the reality is different from the papers that we are having. And this has been attested by the manner in which we deal with the stakeholders when they're supposed to partake in this, because it is the very same stakeholders who are raising their concerns, and they are raising concerns simply because they are masked, they are based in the masses where they are able to say, when these were introduced to us, we develop hope that at least something is coming. There will be creation of jobs. There will be inclusive economic. We are definitely sure that we are going to be taken care of. Now, you find a situation where the very same thing that's supposed to come and help people, it takes decades to kill, even kickstart. And those that decided to not go anywhere in a form of migration, from rural to urban, are even aging. Now they cannot get any job should that particular thing start. We are saying the department must ensure that you fast track whatever that you are creating on the ground so to not lose the confidence of our masses. And our masses indeed, they've been badly treated by the Afghan apartheid regime that made sure that they only exist to be job seekers, not necessarily to be industrialists. That is where time and again, very concerned when we don't see any progress made in the following structure that we created and that we think they don't need permission to exist. We are saying the department, it will be very much vital that whatever we initiate, it must not just be put on papers alone, it must also assist. Number of regulations are the barriers to upcoming entrepreneurs. As much as one is appreciating the introduction of the tax incentive, one will also want to hear what requirements have been relaxed so that those who are new in the economy are able to go in without these barriers because in many cases, these barriers are enabling them to participate and at the end is a problem. One was also touched to understand the, the creation of the project management that you said in page 11. Now the question is why it took so long for the DHC to realize that you cannot run such massive ZEC, I mean SACZ, without project management team. Because those S, I mean SEZ, they are project by their own nature and they're unique by their own nature. Therefore, it can't be correct that you decide you can run through the head of department, you can run through the managers without necessarily having the project managers. That was a serious suicide and that must never happen again if we are really going to change that. We are emphasizing that on the project management because there must be a people who are capacitated and competent of understanding the multidisciplinary approaches of the project managers in carrying such massive jobs. And the issue of the all spheres taking part here, one, one will be much concerned to say, if we check in Houghton, if we are to give an example, which we are very good talking about the Swan one, but Houghton is a province that you also find the Val River as is it. One province, different approach. That must be corrected. It can't be correct that people at the north are enjoying this as is it. People at the south are not enjoying it, but it's one premium. We must never allow the tendency of municipality be governed by another political party. Then people are enjoying something that at the end of the day, people are not enjoying. That is very wrong and it must be corrected. You will go to page nine, you will talk of the investors, you talk of the 54. Of these 54 investors, how many are blacks? And if they are not there, 
what is it that we are doing to ensure that they also be part because we're talking of inclusive economy there. I'm saying this because if we don't do that, we'll not be fulfilling the mandatory which says industrialist is mandatory. We are here to ensure that we produce industrialists. Therefore, it's not good that we are here to produce job seekers. It must also extend and grow. In future, let us know exactly, that is in your page 17. In future, let us know exactly why it is not in operation. Because you'll find that it is not in operation simply because the RI is refusing to approve a plan. You go to our own page 17, you'll realize what I'm talking about. In page 19, if you talk of them with Sina Makado, to date, there are no investors. But what I'm a bit disappointed is to be told that today the team is there. But why today? Simply because we are going to the party. It can't be correct that we take so long when we are supposed to account. We are saying something is waiting on that other side. You see, the other thing that makes me not to be silent is the incommerce. This one is a total 100% disappointment. It's a failure. And uh, if we are to point out what are the failures, exactly what I said earlier on, you go there, there's no permanent CEO. Then we are made to say, no, there's no problem. There's no permanent CEO. Who is the main key player that must ensure that day-to-day -day activities are monitored by this person and is reporting somewhere? It's not there. Then you have to expect that particular to start. The establishment of this technical political steering committee, one will further say that it must never be there to take the existence of the project steering committee. Because in the project steering committee, we understand all the stakeholders are represented. If the technical political steering committee has to be there, it has to account to the state project steering committee because whatever project you must do, you must never leave the stakeholders aside. And there must not be anybody that supersedes the steering committee. We are saying this to avert a number of wrong decisions taken there. In the industrial park, if one has to quickly go there without fear, favor, no prejudice, I can tell you that as long as we are not rectifying this issue of ownership, where the Inkangala is driven by Twani, we must remember Twani is under BA administration. They will do everything possible to ensure that that thing is not making any sense and it's not moving. Therefore, what I realized and observed is that decay is moving so fast than property maintenance in trying to reach the white elephant status. So Comrade Chairperson, those are my concerns that will be accomplished by this question to say, what collaboration efforts are in place with the other department to improve the participation level of SMEs in the economy? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mbuyani. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Uh, I think uh, most of uh, the honorable members have already indicated in terms of what is happening on the SEZ and uh, the industrial park. And uh, also we have heard the apologies to uh, Comrade Mark said, apologizing for raising issues. <clears throat> but uh, nevertheless, Chair, we're talking of industrialization, transformation, and also a capable developmental state. I think the, 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 the presentation, uh, concretely as it is, it, it talks to the capable state, which uh, national, provincial, and the, the local government should be able to work together in delivering all these SEZ and also the industrial parks. Chairperson, uh, I propose that we, we get more clarity on the failed SEZ what are the exact challenges and how can we be able to assist those SEZ? Because for me to establish more SEZ, more industrial parks while we're having some others that are failing or that are ailing in the process, we, we might be shoot ourselves uh, in, in the foot. Uh, the other one, Chair, uh, is that we, we must be able to establish uh, those political steering committee in all all those SEZ that they are, they are failing. And also, given the fact that uh, we have learned that if the, the DTIC is part of this program, those SEZ can be able to move. 
while then now we leave these other provinces to run the, the, the SEZ, while we know that they don't have capacity in terms of executing all those processes. I think it will be suffice for me to say, yeah, let us get more uh, clarity in terms of the status quo of all the SEZ, and also where are they in terms of the revitalization of all these industrial parks. Because here, Chair, there's three uh, industrial parks in, in, in Bumalanga, uh, but I, I only see the in Gandastra, and that Gandastra, I'm told, is in Gauteng, which is city of Tswan. So that means in Bumalanga, we don't have any industrial park. While we have in Gapogweni industrial parks, and uh, that uh, is devastating in terms of the outlook of that uh, industrial park. One other matter, Chair, I think is the issue of the allocation. We're told that all industrial parks have been allocated 50,000, uh, 50, it's 50 million. But here, I only see in Gandastra has been allocated. What about the Gapogweni industrial parks? The one that they say is in, in Hartsband, and also we were not told of what is happening on that. So I also propose that we get the number of all industrial parks uh, that you can be able to deal with. Because if we will look at the developmental model in terms of the district, we will not going to make it. Because as uh, Honorable Malimech has said, we cannot have an SEZ decide, SEZ decide, then we don't have anything. Because as Mpumalanga now, that means we don't have SZ, you don't have any industrial park. The inking the, the, the poorest of the poor of the, they are low, viable in terms of finances. So to me, it doesn't make a, a sense. The other one is the establishment of the digital hubs. We were told last time in the report that there's a digital hub that is coming to Gapoweni uh, Industrial Park, but for now, uh, I don't get any status quo. Hence, that is why I'm saying, Chair, we need also to put this item on the agenda uh, because now we are from the ground and we will see what is happening. So it, we, we will need to uh, come up again and get more information because the uh, industrial park are, are being vandalized and uh, we have security threats in terms of the upgrades. Uh, we, we don't get exactly what are the challenges. And uh, then we'll propose to the, 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 the minister, the, the deputy minister, to come back with the conclude the report that will be able to uh, indicate challenges and also solution. Because political commitment and political will cannot assist. We're talking developments. People are starving now. We have, uh, get a, we have got a report that the economy is still concentrated on the hands of the few with the white people. And people are suffering in 28 years of democracy. And that, uh, Chairperson, I, I, I pause. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Honorable um, Mbiani. Um, can I hand over to DM and the team, DM Ajola? Thanks, thanks very much, uh, Chair. Um, can I request that uh, um, uh, we we start with Mr. Molefani and any okay. members of the team, and then I'll I'll come back to the questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Molefani. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, uh, Chair, and thanks very much, uh, DM, and thanks for those um, great inputs uh, from honourable members, um, the comments uh, that will help us shape our implementation plan, um, but the great questions uh, that also um, um, stimulate our our thinking. I think maybe let me start with um, uh, Mr. Mbuane's questions and comments concerning the. Bumalanga uh, projects, as I indicated on the um, in the presentation, that as you know, the SCs, uh, the industrial parks, are owned by the province, so um, they are owned, uh, they are managed, and they are driven by the province. So the slowness in terms of revitalization would only be in the main the um, be, uh, on the basis of the applications that uh, we get uh, as the DTSC. So 
the applications come from the provinces uh, to the DTIC in so far as the funding for revitalization. So it means uh, in terms of, uh, I know for a fact that in terms of the, um, um, the Gabogweni one, um, it's been finalized uh, with the support of uh, DBSA. I'm not so sure if it has been submitted, but um, the last that I had, it was, the, it was still um, being finalized um, in, uh, by the, uh, with the support of uh, DBSA. But the reality of the matter, Chair, is that even if uh, the application was to be approved, um, it would not um, address the challenges that I've mentioned. So as I indicated, with the new approach, we want a situation where all stakeholders are involved because if the DTIC gives them money, but the province, uh, which is owning the park, does not provide the security, we run the risk of having the, um, the infrastructure that we built dilapidated, or we run the risk of having the infrastructure that we've built not be maintained. So that is why we are requesting that this new approach in so far as the industrial parks be supported so that um, we know very well that from outset we are agreeing as critical stakeholders in so far as building that. We are aware of the other projects uh, as indicated part of the work package that we are doing now is to go and identify uh, opportunities uh, in all the districts. I uh, had um, Honorable Mameja saying that, that the team is in Limpopo because uh, there was this meeting. Um, that is not correct, uh, Honorable Member. Um, we have been consistently meeting with provinces. Uh, it so happened that uh, the meeting happens at the time when we had already arranged for the Limpopo visit. So part of our discussion with Limpopo uh, which we also um, started with them in so far as identifying opportunities across all the districts uh, that we will be um, supporting as government, uh, included the sitting down um, and, and planning uh, the rollout of the implementation of uh, Dubazi. Um, in actual fact, the, the meeting uh, was supposed to start at nine. It will only start now at one uh, because of the, um, the, the, the portfolio committee. The intention there is to roll out um, what has been asked about the new approach. Um, here, we're going to be discussing how we're going to roll out the Duwazi, um, um, as, uh, the proposed Duwazi SEZ, um, which we as the DTIC rolled out in, in Houghton. So we're going to provinces uh, to help them package the rollout plans. So in Duwazi, for example, um, part of the uh, what we have agreed on or developed is a, a quadripartite agreement which outlined roles and responsibilities and the contribution from all critical four stakeholders, the province, uh, national, the district, and the local. Uh, we've all agreeing in terms of who's going to do what, how we're going to establish the company, how is it going to be governed, and in terms of the land, the community involved, the land is owned by the community, how to involve the community, the private sector is involved, how do we roll out this with the private sector because the SEZ or proposed SEZ is about mineral beneficiation. So we can't do that in isolation with the, um, um, from, the, from the mining houses. So I'm just trying to correct the statement that says the trip is because of the, um, 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 the portfolio committee, but also how do we uh, roll out and what are we doing in other provinces? So this is just an example. The DM has mentioned that we were in the Eastern Cape last week with the MEC and the team from all the SEZs, Kuha East London and the Wild Coast, discussing the very same thing and agreeing on the way forward. So this is something that we are rolling out across the country in terms of how do we then um, um, move away from the old system of doing things where we just engage at application level, but plan things together and agree in terms of how do we contribute so that uh, we're able to make a maximum impact. And of course, uh, that is why we are saying that um, we, we have also established political steering committee. Political steering committee, they are there to provide guidance to technical team, but they're also there to help us unlock challenges that we may be experiencing that require political leadership. So we think the current arrangement that is there to guide us, it has helped us in 20, uh, because that's where we started. Um, Dear Majona was there leading us uh, from the front in making sure that all the other um, requirements are accomplished. Many of the things that 
are accomplished within two years and I indicated that they were um, exceedingly accomplished in three months. And this is what we think honorable members um, should be implemented um, um, every, everywhere. So those are some of the practical examples in, in, the, in the wild coast, the province, um, when they applied for special economic zone, were able to convince them immediately that, look, um, given the, the scale of investments, the business case that is submitted, we do think that we should uh, collectively implement this through a phased approach. And that phased approach means the proposed SCZ would first be implemented as an industrial park, which then responds to some of the questions to say, how do we attract investments before designation? Um, are we get, are we, um, are we, um, uh, so how are we going to do that? So we, we immediately assist and accommodate some of these investments. So the province was able to contribute money immediately for bulk infrastructure, and the DTIC was able to contribute money for to, um, for bulk infrastructure as well to supplement what the province has uh, contributed and we're able to agree in terms of who's going to do that which is what we are struggling with uh, in, um, in in Pumalanga um, um, where the province is still expecting us to um, implement things in an old way so we are saying in the new approach the province municipalities you are forced to implement um, so so that's that's what we, we are doing I think there were, there was also a question from um, Honorable Moroda, where he says uh, the state has uh, invested uh, 22 billion. Um, that is a private investment. So the 24 billion uh, comes from, is a private operational investment. So it's not a DTIC um, 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 uh, investment, it's a, uh, it's a private sector investment. And of course, I indicated some, uh, some of the challenges why we have 19,000 job, uh, jobs, mainly because one, um, we only counting factory floor jobs. We don't count multipliers. We don't count um, 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 support jobs like security and all these other jobs. These are just factory jobs. So we're sitting at 19,000. Um, in addition to that, we've had challenges related to COVID where many of the companies, of course, they then had to readjust themselves and, and share jobs. But also um, we, we're dealing with the high-tech industries now. And we got to accept that, of course, uh, they would come at a cost. Some of these uh, uh, factories, they've changed their innovations, which of course then affected uh, the, the, the number of uh, jobs. And of course, there was also a question around industrial parks. Uh, I think there was also a mention that the SCZ uh, contributed just um, industrial park thousand jobs. Um, the SCZ in the, in the presentation, we, um, we said that the jobs that are created in the parks um, the, we were sitting at, at the time when we were compiling the list, we we're sitting at uh, around 46,000, uh, just over 46,400. Um, the investment value is 16, uh, 6 billion. And I must indicate that the industrial park um, program is still critical, is still necessary, is still very important. Um, there are many parks that are still viable. And of course, as I indicated, they were established uh, privately to, to the political issues, but at the moment, um, because of uh, density and the uh, um, and, and and many other things that have been developed, they are viable. Some of them, they just need us to agree with all the spheres of government, which has been um, uh, emphasized by Honorable Mangamasha that we need to work as all spheres of government to ensure that we revitalize the park. If, for example, the issue of uh, governance. Owner, uh, governance or ownership issues was to be resolved in Ekandastria, Babelech, and Harangu. These are strategically located industrial parks that would immediately open up opportunities, whether owned by the private sector or transferred to Gauteng province or to the municipalities. But the reality of the matter is what is uh, inhibiting the, pro, uh, the growth and the potential of those uh, parks is uh, really around the governance arrangements. <clears throat> There was an issue around the black industrialists in the SCZs. I think, um, honorable members, I think that's uh, some of the information that uh, we can uh, uh, submit. I'm not so sure as well in terms of the number as yet, uh, but we can uh, go back and, uh, and establish. And then there was a question from um, um, uh, um, honorable, um, 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 let me just check, honorable thing uh, about which SCZs have, uh, have beneficiation as a focus. 
I think all the SEZs have got some components, some elements of beneficiation, in, especially in the agro-processing. Uh, there's some elements of agro-processing at Kuha. Um, um, there was uh, some elements of uh, dairy production at, uh, um, at uh, East London and some mineral related uh, activities at East London, um, uh, um, um, to the trade port. But in the main part of the reason why we then um, 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 revamped the IDZ program to introduce the SEZ was to look at the beneficiation of our resource endowments in the main minerals and agricultural produce, including the sun in the Northern Cape, by the way. Um, in the in terms of the current SEZs that are earmarked for beneficiation, there is a lot of potential in Mozilla for agro processing and the minerals processing. So, as I indicated, we have for a longest time dealing with, have been dealing with challenges that are were beyond the project team's control, which were EIAs uh, in the in the Mozilla SEZ. Now that they've got that, we hope that the even the appeals will be won. That would unlock serious opportunities in the mineral beneficiation as well as agro processing. I've given an example about Dubati, where it's mainly about um, um, uh, the platinum uh, uh, group metals beneficiation, both at the level of downstream and upstream uh, um, opportunities, uh, the mining input uh, uh, supply, as well as the uh, downstream beneficiation. And of course, we also recognize that it's going to be a long journey for downstream beneficiation because at the moment, they've got more than 20 mines in the region, uh, but they don't have a smelter or refineries. For part of the beneficiation opportunities would be to attract investments in that in that in that space um i think uh, it was honorable thing was who said uh, we've only created 1000 i think i've responded to to that question why is ngomas not operational um, um, um despite over 20 million given to the department um by the department as i indicated when we identified all these scz's um we immediately uh, set aside money for the um, project management units as well as for feasibility studies. Feasibility studies is a very thorough process that is not only about documentation, but various um, elements, including EIAs and all the other things that uh, are town planning related. So that uh, money was mainly about that until designation. So when SZ, once the SZ is designated, province has to take over the implementation. Um, and that is the old um, regime that I've spoken about. And there has been serious delays in the um, Mbumalanga province. There was only movement re uh, when we started to be directly involved as the DTIC and through project management unit, where we're able to now get uh, approval from some of the things that required municipalities, but also able to bring uh, on board the involvement of municipalities into the project. We've been able to help them uh, establish the company. We've been able to um, help them secure that first uh, income investment. So the support or the implementation of this uh, new approach has really demonstrated the some of the um, benefits uh, in the in that part of the of the country. So we do hope that. Um, through the support of the PMU, um, the uh, breaking ground uh, on the, uh, this year in this financial year would happen, and some will see a dust um, by the end of the financial year in terms of uh, bulk infrastructure as well as some of the top structures for investments. Um, the when we engage with the DP World, they promised indeed that um, the. They, they would uh, want to be operational within this current financial year. So we do hope that if everything go well, um, we would have a first investor um, 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 on the ground by the end of this financial year. <clears throat> um, there was a question about this currently a, a job bloodbath. When will the SEZ be operational? We have SEZs uh, operational at the moment. Um, as indicated, uh, we have SEZs uh, with the investment value of um, 22 billion, creating um, just uh, under 20,000 jobs. Um, there are other uh, uh, investments that are secured um, with the investment value of 40 billion. And there was a question about, um, I think SEZ operational and um, investment op uh, non-operational. The non-operational investments, what they mean is that we have investments, we've secured investments, but they are not yet operational. For example, 
um, in Tazes, uh, um, um, if we were to go to Tron Automotive SCZ, you will have three operational factories. Um, you will have nine MT factories. Those nine fact uh, MT factories is what we call secured but non-operational. Non-operational, it means they have not yet started operating. So we can't even count the jobs because jobs are still promises. Once the investors occupy the factories and they start operating, that's when we, uh, we call it operational investor. So um, non-operational chair, it simply means investment is there, is secured, but they're still dealing with other things. I, I explained earlier to say that some uh, would be um, at the construction phase, some would be uh, probably waiting for building plans to be approved. And the building plans, uh, by the way, is not a simple matter. These are architecture pro uh, uh, projects that are legislated. So it's not something that you can submit today and get tomorrow. Um, it requires uh, all, for example, all the departments to command your engineers, your ESCOM, water, everything. So it's a very tedious project, um, but with this new approach, we're able to deal with that and just create one committee in the municipality that assess everything. So I think, uh, Chair, um, um, th there, there, there was another question that says, can, can the department indicate why we still have a lot of proposal essays that are, uh, the, uh, that are not succeeding? The proposed essays that I think we will continue to have them, um, because when we say the SCZ is proposed, it means cabinet has not, or the minister has not designated them, but they are under consideration. They are going through different stages. So first stage, as I indicated, could be about feasibility study to establish if the SCZ um, is going to be viable. Part of that would be to deal with the EIA uh, environmental authorization, the land acquisition, the land acquisition remains a challenge, um, as we know in South Africa. Many of the land are privately owned uh, or they are communally owned. We are lucky where they are owned by the province. In some instances, they are owned by the municipality. You have to persuade them to change plans and so forth. So that's the process that we take. Um, so application is not just the paperwork, but the work that comes with that would involve, for example, again, the securing of investment. So that's why we are saying, we want solid investment before designation so that when we come to a portfolio committee and say, we've designated this particular SCZ today, we are able to immediately demonstrate that by this and this date, that, that investment would be operational on the ground. So it's a very tedious process and very complex uh, process that is even beyond the DTIC or province. Uh, it's got lots of uh, dependencies. So that's why I'm saying we would continue to have um, a lot of uh, proposed SCZs as we proceed. So with that, uh, um, and I think uh, most of the inputs were really comments that uh, we would uh, welcome, uh, but thank you. Thank you. Um, TM Majola. Thanks, Thanks very much, uh, Chairperson. And, and Chair, let's, let's thank the honorable members for uh, for all the, the questions that they, they, they have posed. Um, Mr. Molefani has uh, uh, covered most of the questions that the honorable members raised. Uh, if you can allow me here just to respond to a few questions. The honorable string, uh, it's a big question, a consistent question of regard to beneficiation. Um, so this is what you wanted to do uh, along the platinum belt with the Bojanala uh, SEZ. Uh, this has not taken uh, off the ground yet. We're now focusing uh, on Feta uh, Homutubati because it's a mining area to ensure that we work with the mining companies around there to ensure that uh, this uh, uh, SEZ becomes a hub of mineral beneficiation. We will do the same uh, in uh, Musina Makado, given that uh, that's also a mining area. So the, the platinum belt in, in Northwest, it is uh, an issue that uh, we must pay, pay attention to. 
So the issue of the beneficiation of our minerals uh, is a strategic objective of government. So that's something that we are going to ensure that the, our SEZ can focus attention on. The, with regard to um, the questions by Honorable McPherson, the first comment I want to make is that uh, Honorable McPherson, we do take very seriously the the comments, the suggestions that are made by members of uh, parliament, and we do want to take these uh, these forward. Uh, with regard to the industrial parks and the comments the Honorable McPherson was uh, was, was making. We, we already have said in the report that uh, we are going to be looking at the industrial parks uh, case by case in line with what we want to do in each of the districts. That uh, there are industrial parks that where we, we have got to identify that we must ramp up. Uh, and there are those that need to be uh, refocused in terms of uh, the available proposition uh, there are others that, as the report says, that we will think uh, we will consider giving them over to the private sector to uh, to to manage uh, those ones that we think that uh, we are not in a position to immediately uh, ensure that they are productive. Uh, with regard to uh, Honorable Moore, that asks a big question, uh, and this is a question that ourselves have been considering. Uh, and the question is, is the program sustainable given what has happened? Uh, Honorable Mulder, the, the answer is, if we continue the way we have been uh, doing things, uh, the sustainability of the program will be in question. So we do recognize that uh, we've got uh, to do things differently. That's what the cabinet directed us to do in 2019 and our changing our approach to special economic zones, and we think we're making progress. If we didn't have this program, you can imagine what would have been the situation in, uh, in uh, Tabeja uh, if there was no Kuha uh, Industrial Development Corporation uh, and, the, and the IDZ in that part of the country. The same would have applied to East London IDZ um, if uh, we didn't have this program, we uh, wouldn't have had the, the, the amount of investments that we now have uh, uh, in, in East London. So in Swani, Honorable Mould, if uh, the, 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 the investment by Ford of the 16 billion rand was, uh, was based on the fact that we're going to be able to establish a functioning special economic zone. So without that, that 16 billion investment would have moved to Thailand. And uh, the additional investment in new energy vehicles that has now been announced by, uh, uh, by Ford would not locate in Swan if there was no special economic zone there. So we do recognize that there have been uh, challenges with some of our industrial parks and some of our special economic zones but we're acting on them. And honorable my, my limit, it's just a coincidence. I can assure that you that uh, next time uh, we come to the portfolio committee, it's highly like that uh, the team will be different parts, will be presenting from different parts of the country. As I said, said that uh, we, had, we were in Eastern Cape last week, the team is in Limpopo. I will join them there at the end of the month to ensure that we can break ground in Mosina Makado. Uh, in the following week, we will be in Nkomazi. And I want to make sure that uh, with our future visit, we can uh, invite honorable members, especially those who come from those respective provinces to join us so that we can see for ourselves the work that uh, is being done there. Uh, <clears throat> I, I recognize the honorable Malemecha, we have raised this matter privacy of uh, improving our stakeholder engagement we will learn from what has happened in turn and replicate this in the other special economic zones. Uh, Honorable Mbuyani, lastly, just to say that uh, we, we're working hard to ensure that uh, we can uh, have functional steering committees that involve all the, the relevant local and district municipalities or metro municipalities and the provincial government and the DTIC 
and in the cases where it is necessary, some of the private sector investors to ensure that uh, we can uh, have a coordinated approach in the in the in, in our approach to the implementation of the program of special economic zone. So, chair, okay, with what uh, where Honorable Buyan is saying about, can you come back with a concrete uh, report? We can say to you that, uh, Chair, it's uh, up to the, <clears throat> the committee, depending on how much time we have. But for instance, I, I can say that if, for instance, we were to say in September, October, we want to come back uh, to give us a report on what concretely has happened with regard to the things we have shown we're going to be working on in the way forward of the presentation, would be happy to come back to the committee to say that in May, beginning of May, we promised that we're going to do the following things in the following special economic zones and in the following industrial parks and give you a progress report about what we have done. So we will be happy to return at a later stage in a few months time to the committee to give us, to give you progress report on the things that we're reporting on here today. So with that, uh, Chairperson, I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, that uh, would be, they would constitute the, uh, the rest, the, the, the totality of our response to the questions. And I know that there've been comments that uh, we didn't respond to that uh, we can take forward. We didn't, uh, we did take account of those. Thanks, thanks very much. Honorable Thank you very much. I think if the team can then just check any comments or questions that were not answered, and then if we can have that in writing um, within the next seven days, I think that will be fine. But um, I'm very happy to hear on uh, 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 Deputy Minister that you, you are undertaking to come back to us. We take note as a portfolio committee, um, the seriousness with which we are treating uh, SEZs and IDZs because we note that it is an, uh, the overarching uh, objectives of uh, industrialization and promoting job creation through uh, expanding our manu manufacturing capacity as uh, DM uh, Gina has said at, at the start of our deliberations. Also, we note um, the, um, the objective of transforming and making our economy more inclusive. And we realize the importance of making sure that we create a economic environment um, where we where there is uh, a greater investment, appetite for investment. And of course, that leads to job creation and that leads to people being able to work and putting food on the table. So um, I thank you also for, for your undertaking to include members where we are then, um, where you are going to do some, uh, some work because I think it also uh, it, it assists us in understanding how uh, the, the, the department is tackling uh, particularly the problems that there are. Um, also, we would uh, then um, like an indication by when the new way of doing SEZs would, would go to the cabinet. Uh, I note in your document, you're saying that it will be going for approval. But with that, I thank the department led by um, Deputy Minister Majola and Deputy Minister Gina uh, initially uh, for coming to brief us. And um, this has been a very robust and, and honest uh, interaction. And we look back to the department, we look forward to the department coming back to us uh, to further our discussions. Thank you very much. Um, we will be concluding our meeting. Can I just check with um, the secretary to just make some announcements about our, our program going forward tomorrow? Um, thank you, Chairperson. 
Chairperson, we have submitted to, to all members a draft of the budget vote report. It's the first draft. And as indica indicated, editing is still ongoing. So if there's any spelling or any other issues, it will be fixed. I also requested that members should submit concluding remarks and um, recommendations for us to consider because the committee is scheduled to look at the first draft tomorrow. And we requested that members submit those concluding remarks and recommendations by nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And therefore, we would like to request that we start proceedings later to afford us the opportunity to look at those recommendations and remarks and put it together for members to consider. And we start, if it with permission of the committee, at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, not at the scheduled nine o'clock as we normally do. So that those are the issues from that we want to raise, Chair, that the members have the report, members must submit recommendations and conclude the remarks by nine o'clock tomorrow morning, which affords us a two hour time frame to come to put it together for for members to consider it from eleven o'clock onwards, if the committee so wish, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, the House uh, starts at, at three o'clock tomorrow, so I'm sure we will uh, give the Secretariat time to, to consider and to, to include inputs from the various political parties into the report that we will deal with tomorrow. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to everyone on the platform. Um, the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.